taste a large Papa John's Ultimate Pepperoni Pizza for just $11.99. A huge value for double the pepperoni on a crispy, thin crust. Just $11.99. Call or click PapaJohns.com today. Better ingredients, better pizza. Papa John's. The Jazz and Heat are about to take the floor. It's almost time for the tip here at the Heat's house. Let's toss it back over to Eric and Tony. Gentlemen, good afternoon. And good day to you, Jackson. The Heat fans all over this great Heat nation beginning here in South Florida. Couldn't imagine a better test for the Heat before they venture out to play six of their next seven on the road and going against this finely tuned Utah machine. They're healthy again. They're ripping off wins, 12 of their last 13. And this is the first of back-to-back -back games for Miami, both starting at 1 in the afternoon. The Heat will play the Sixers in Philadelphia, 1 o'clock tomorrow. How different is it for these two teams to play the 1 o'clock tip today? Coach Spolstra talked about that pregame, Eric. He said, you know, we practice every day around this time. They go about 11, 12 o'clock, 12 o'clock after game nights. And so yeah, he said the first couple of minutes probably be a little sluggish for both teams, but they'll both get into it. Remember, Miami is without Daquan Cook today. He's missing the game because of a tooth extraction yesterday. Cook missing his fifth game of the year. The Heat have lost three of the four they've played without. Our officiating crew assigned by the NBA for this afternoon's contest. Tom Washington, Bill Spooner, and former NBA point guard Haywood Workman. And it's Tom Washington, the crew chief, that'll get us started with our opening tip. And South Florida, thanks for joining us on this 1 p.m. start time. Off we go on today's Miami Heat NBA adventure. With 35 wins. That's 20 more than a year ago. The largest one season improvement in franchise history. Jermaine O'Neal gets it started quickly. Jermaine playing in his 13th game in a Heat uniform and coach on the offensive end more than holding his own. As they usually start, he go inside to Jermaine to get him going early. They're starting to run the offense through him. And later in the game, you know who's handling the ball, Dean Wade. Well, Miami winning the early season matchup in Utah this year, but that was a game the Jazz were without Carlos Boozer and Andre Kirilenko. Three there from C.J. Miles, the young man who came right out of high school in Dallas into the NBA. Gets the Jazz on the board with his 53rd triple this year. Shooting 36% from the three-point line. That's a terrific percentage. C.J. Miles and Ronnie Brewer, guys, are not household names, but they are Utah starters. Boone missing the three. Boozer outlets quickly. One of the best point guards in pro basketball. The fourth-year man, Darren Williams. Yeah, one of D-Wade's oh. teammates for the gold medal last summer. So is Carlos Boozer, who gets on the scoreboard. The seven-year veteran, Adam Duke. Carlos Boozer missing 45 games this year with issues. His left quad, his left knee, and his right ankle costing him over half of this season. Wait on the fake. On the give and go for two. Same nice thing. feed by Jermaine O'Neal. Yeah, same play worked the other night. If the guy bites on the fake by Wade, he can draw the foul or he can give it up and go. So the give and go, which is Celtics used for many years to win championships, worked right there for the Heat. Well, Darren Williams had that one in fifth gear and the Heat turn it over. As we said the other night, they did the same thing, the same two guys. Watch Wade with the fake. His defender is out of place. You know, can't get back in time. D. Wade knows how to cut, and Jermaine O'Neal is a very good passer. That was a perfect feed for D. Wade with the Jazz ahead by three. One of the better shooting bigs in the league is Mehmet Okor, among the league's leaders in three-point percentage. And the Heat defense will be taxed today. They do force a turnover here. And will Tom Washington get overruled by Bill Spooner? No. There's Jerry Sloan. His team is averaging 103 points per game. They are sixth in the NBA in scoring, third in field goal percentage, first in assists and steals. Second in forcing turnovers, so they're, they're doing it at both ends of the floor. Yeah, they're also first in the NBA in points off turnovers as O'Neal converts for the second time in as many shots. Yeah, we've seen him turning over that right shoulder. That's something he's very comfortable with down near the basket. Well, four points for Jermaine, a one-point lead for Utah as Jamar Moon comes down with the Carlos Boozer miss. Darren Williams going under the screen and roll there on Chalmers. He's going to make Chalmers make a few before he goes over it. O'Neal against Okun. And oh no, first miss for Jermaine today. 
Darren Williams, he's got everything you need in a point guard. Size, skill, and vision. Miles missing the three. And confidence. And Haslam has the rebound. Three minutes in, Miami down by one. Wade using a crossover and a very good defender in Ronnie Brewer. Brewer at six feet seven, a long wingspan on the defensive mindset. Jerry Sloan comfortable with putting young Brewer on the skill Dwayne Wade. He said the number one goal for Brewer, don't commit the silly fouls. Pick your spot. Coach Bolster talked before the game how since Dwayne Wade is making that mid-range shot, how teams are having difficulty guarding him because they can't play off him. They'll hit it. they push up close. they go around him. Right there, you saw Wade draw the foul. Jermaine O'Neal on the putback. Missed it. After Chalmers had missed on the layup. Yeah, and here comes Williams. Fast break. Finds O'Cor from three-point land. Jermaine O'Neal looked like he got hit on the arm on that last shot. Wade reaching in on O'Cor. The tip by Boozer doesn't go, and here comes Dwayne with the heat still down by one. Wade on the pull-up. And the rebound to Ronnie Brewer. Well, he'd have missed five of their first eight shots. The Jazz are three for six. Williams driving by Chalmers. Lost it out of bounds. It'll stay with Utah. That's a very difficult assignment for Mario Chalmers, who's better coming off the ball for steals, but that's quite a one-on-one -on -one assignment for him today, Coach. Yeah, Darren Williams in his fourth year in the NBA, so he's got the savvy, the experience also from that Olympic team to go with all the ability and the instincts. Chalmers got lost in a maze of screens. Darren Williams knocking in his second jumper in as many attempts, so he's got four points and a couple of early assists. You mentioned he and Chris Paul, two leaders, two leaders in the NBA in assists. The only two guys averaging double-figure assists for the season. Darren Williams was third in the NBA in assists last year. Even better this season. Haslam with a miss. C.J. Miles with a rebound in the outlet. Jazz remain under the radar. One of the better teams in the West, one of the best offensive teams in the league, and they don't do it with spectacular plays. They do it like that with brilliant execution in half court. Very good recognition right there, knowing that their the offensive player they're, they're on the low post is being fronted. They skip the ball to the high post, got a high-low pass inside for an easy layup for Boozer. So four points for Boozer. That was a great assist by Mehmet Okor. And Okor reaching in, commits the foul on Jermaine O'Neal. Okor's first. Utah's second. Here's what we were talking about. Look at the recognition of where the pass goes. When it goes to the high post, you've got Boozer with his defender on the high side. He's got an easy layup to the rim. A good look at Utah's work on the offensive end on your Maroonie.com net cam replay. In South Florida, when you need a car, truck, or van, you know who to call by now. Call 1-877-MAROONIE. I think uh, Jermaine may have gotten away with a little travel on that last play, Eric. He traveled before he got fouled. Now, today's game is being simulcast in Spanish. You can access this audio feature by selecting the built-in SAP option on your television. If you do, enjoy listening to the radio voice of the Miami Heat in Espanol. Jose Pineda with his color analyst, Joe Pujol. And La Voz. Well, Jermaine O'Neal has five points for Miami, five of the Heat's first seven. They got to slow down the Jazz this end. Utah's hit five of their first eight shots. Coach, year after year, they run the same stuff, and it always works. Yeah, the great execution. Jerry Sloan's an old-school kind of coach. He's got a lot of discipline with the system that they run. And they're very fortunate. They've always had a great point guard to run. You know, John Stockton and now Darren Williams. A 7-1 run by Utah. A couple of triples for C.J. Miles already in this game. Wade will try a three. Kaboom! That's what happens when you play off of him. That time, Brewer was dealing with the screen. He got caught up in it, and D-Wade buried the three. 11 consecutive games. Dwayne Wade has tripled there. He comes up with a steal. On his way for two more. Oh, Dwayne Wade. Well, it's 11 straight games with a three. He's also got a steal streak going now. Nine consecutive games with at least one of those. Yes, it didn't take him long for both streaks, did it? 
matter of fact, Wade has four games in a row with three, actually four steals in three straight, but a slam dunk there uncontested for Carlos Boozer. Utah continues to rack up easy scores. They've made seven of their first ten shots. You better be able to defend the pick and roll when you play the Utah Jazz because they'll run you to death with that. That was too easy right there. Five and a half minutes left in this first quarter on a day where Dwayne Wade could become the franchise's scoring leader in the Heat history. He's only 14 points shy of breaking Alonzo Mourning's record as Ron Brewer came in, and we get a foul on Jamario Moon. First foul on Moon, and Miami's first foul of the fray. He is chasing down history just a matter of time until Dwayne Wade passes Alonzo Mourning as Miami's all-time NBA scoring leader. The Jazz win it, and Jerry Sloan makes history. They broke the mold, you know, when they made him, because there aren't any like him in this league. I think he has a lot of Lombardi in him. He knows which guys to kick in the rear, and he knows which guys to put his arm around, you know. He never threw his players under the bus. It's, it's always his fault, even though deep down it wasn't. And uh, I don't know, I just, it's been great. Now the legendary Jerry Sloan, he's 66 years old, his 21st season with Utah, his 24th as an NBA head coach. And he is number four on the NBA's all-time winning list. 65 victories shy of Pat Riley. He is the longest tenured NBA coach in history. 21 years with the same team. Red Auerbach, second best, 16 years with Boston. And Sloan, I think he's a sure thing for the Hall of Fame in Springfield. He and John Stockton on the finalists ballot for election next year. I mean, all four of those guys will make it. They all should be first ballot MVP, I mean, uh, Hall of Fame guys. And you remember, Eric, we talked to Kenny Nat out in Sacramento, and he said the key things that Coach Sloan told him when he started, became a head coach. He said, never take any credit. Always give the players the credit. And never think about the money that the players are making. Money that has anything to do with decisions that you make. Those are two great nuggets for a, a young head coach to adhere to. And that's what Jerry Sloan has done his whole career. Ronnie Brewer getting one of two. The Jazz, who have led by as many as seven right now, scored a five-point lead with five and change left in this first quarter. Wade's jumper over Brewer is short. And the rebound down to C.J. Miles. Jerry Sloan loves players like Ronnie Brewer and C.J. Miles. Not the big reputations, but long-arm defenders who play a valuable team role. He's a guy, I told you about old-fashioned schools, uh, uh, rules, and uh, he's a guy like, the, like uh, Pat Riley. That you, you, you play hard, you don't worry about anything but doing your job, and then you get rewarded for that, and that's the way Jerry Sloan coaches. Jamario Moon with a jumper that comes up short. They each has five for their first 13, not getting much in the way of inside scores just yet. Utah coming here with a record of 41 and 24. They're five under 500 on the road at 13 and 18. Darren Williams, five to shoot. Dwayne Wade comes up with his second steal of the first quarter. He was Wade, waiting. number two in the NBA in steals this year. He was waiting for that, Eric. You could see him in the weight. He knew what Darren Williams was going to do, and then he stole it. That was knocked out of bounds by Darren Williams. Now the Heat will retain possession and get a fresh shot clock. Watch D. Wade again. He's going to come from the left side. He waited just long enough to let Darren Williams think he had the pass, and then he stole it. Now a couple of changes for Miami. Michael Beasley for one, and Luther Head making his Heat debut. Head coming off the bench as the Heat's first guard. Remember, Daquan Cook is not available today. Cook had a tooth pulled yesterday, so in comes Luther Head, the fourth-year guard from Illinois, who teamed with Darren Williams in the Illini backcourt back in the day. Yeah, I got to tell you, Eric, he was one of my favorite unheralded guys a couple of years ago in Houston. He's a guy I looked in the box score when you look through the scores from game to game, and uh, I'm happy he's here. I think he's got you know, to play the way he did two years ago in Houston, and he'll help this Heat team. He played well his first two years as a member of the Rocket. Beasley got his first score off the bench. He's been a microwave-like player for Miami. Miami, coming off the bench for buckets. Well, we mentioned the Daquan Cook absence today. With more on that story, let's check in with Jason Jackson. Eric, as you noted, that tooth extracted yesterday. It was on the left side. They're listing him as day-to-day. -day. He's going to travel with the team to Philadelphia for the road trip. I doubt having had this done that he'll be ready to go tomorrow, but we'll see about that. But it will be on the play tonight as the team goes to Philadelphia. Back over to you. 
All right, thanks, Jax. Luther Head gave Moon an alley oop he couldn't do anything with, and then Head triples on his first Miami Heat shot. How cool was that? And you know, when uh, when Beasley came in the game and O'Neal went out, you got Udonis playing center now, and Luther Head's the point guard. That's Luther Head's 15th triple of the year, and another quick score for the Jazz, Darren Williams. He's got six points and four assists. Carlos Boozer, eight points and four rebounds. And right now, the Jazz shooting 64%. On 9 of 14. Eric, on that high-low pass, he'd have to do a better job of contesting the pass. Get all over the guy. Don't let him just stand there and look at the guy open in the low post. And we get a whistle and a Utah foul upcoming on the Michael Beasley drive. Now, Luther Head hadn't played in a while. This is his first shot in an NBA game since January 10th. He checks it up from three-point land. And Luther, you could always remember your first shot in Miami, a made three. The Heat's first year skipper, Eric Spolstra. He's having a terrific rookie season as an NBA head coach. The Heat's sixth all-time head coach. He's been in that position since the 28th of last April. And what a year it's been for Eric Spolstra and Miami, your Marines.com leader of the game. 20 more wins than a year ago, surpassing the second season. Pat Riley was in Miami when he jumped the Heat from 42 to 61 victories. Elite with 20 more wins than a year ago and still 18 games remaining in the season, including this one. And E. Spo. As will spot in NBA history with one more win, he'll pass former Heat assistant coach and one-time Chicago Bulls head man Ed Badger for the biggest improvement under a first-year head coach in NBA history. Yeah, Eric, when uh, he got the job, a lot of people asked me, uh, what did I think of Spo? And I said, you know what? He's a terrific young coach. He's going to do a great job. The only thing he lacks is experience, and he has an outstanding assistant, you know, assistant crew there with him, including which includes Ron Rothstein, who has head coaching experience in the NBA, the first head coach of the Miami Heat. So it's all working for the Heat, both with players and with coaches. Nine points for Dwayne Wade as Brewer mails one in. Ronnie Brewer's first field goal. Brewer has three points. Ron Brewer, the young man out of Arkansas in his third season. He's only 23 years old and uh, continues to get better and better. He's improving that outside shot. Remember when we played against him before, he's a guy that like, like, only scores really around the basket, but now he's, he's going out and extending it. He's gonna, he's gonna make defenders uh, hard to guard him because he's gonna be able to extend, that, uh, st extend the defense. Kyle Korver tripling for the 75th time this year. The former Philadelphia 76er averaging eight and a half points a game. He's got the Jazz up by seven, which equals Utah's largest lead of this first quarter. That was exactly the spot he was working on before the game. Are well, they saying Beasley was out of bounds fighting for that ball, so it's going to be Utah ball. See this again. Watch as he fights below. Here he is right in the bottom of your screen. And as they're fighting for the ball, he goes out of bounds. Now James Jones is into Miami's lineup now. Jones replacing Jamario Moon at small forward. And by the way, I didn't notice it at the outset. Dwayne Wade's got a band-aid back under his eye, but a black uniform band-aid. Yeah, I, never, I didn't notice it either because it is black and it matches the uniform. And uh, James Jones fouls. James Jones fouling the jump shooter, Ronnie Brewer. That's the first on James Jones. The second team foul on Miami. You remember the rage, the fashion rage D-Wade caused by wearing the D-Wade Band-Aids. Was soon outlawed by the NBA, but Wade still protecting what was a gash that needed stitches to close. Coach Ronnie Brewer, his dad, played with Sidney Moncrief and Marvin Delf, Ron Brewer, team with Moncrief and Delf. They became the well-known triplets for the Arkansas team that went all the way to the 1978 Final Four. Ron Brewer Sr. played eight NBA seasons. And look at Ron Brewer Jr. follow up his own mess and get Utah another possession. See, as a coach today, Eric, you don't you don't kick coach following your own shot, but Brewer knew that he was missing that shot, so he out hustled everybody to the ball. Now the Jazz, after the Heat had tied this game at 17, Utah's gone on a 10-2 run. Eric, the reason why you, you don't uh, teach that is because when you're shooting the ball, you shouldn't be moving forward to go get the rebound. It's going to mess up your uh, balance and rotation. Jazz turn it over, even though they are leading by 
eight points at 27 to 19. This is their largest lead of this first quarter. And Utah taking liberties on the offensive end, shooting 65%. D. Wade hit it out. He deflected it, according to the outside official, Tom Washington. So Utah takes the ball out. What execution. Cal Corver gets a layup on an inbounds play. Five points for Corver since coming off the bench two minutes ago. It's a 10-point Utah lead. How about Utah? 10 assists for 12 field goals. That's how they play. Lead the league in assists. This is what they do. They surgically dissect your defense with great screens, solid cuts, and terrific perimeter shooting, and very unselfish and precise passing. Yeah, Jerry Sloan di a discipline. They had their 12-game winning streak end in Atlanta Wednesday, 100-93, to in a game the Hawks played without the services of one of their starting forwards, Marvin Williams. Three to shoot. Corver leading Brevin Knight. And the point guard out of Stanford came up with a air ball, a shot clock violation, giving the Heat the basketball back with just under three seconds left in the first quarter. they got to add more to that. There was three-something left uh, all between the difference between the shot clock and the game clock is 3.8. So they've adjusted it. Oh, they made it 4.3. Beasley from half court. Oh, that looked good when he released it. Wow. Well, the Jazz scored 29 first quarter points on 63% shooting. After one quarter, the visitors from Salt Lake leading Miami by 10. And Maximo Gomez Park, informally known as Domino Park, one of the main meeting places in Little Havana. Almost any time of the day, it is filled with retirees and neighborhood folks playing dominoes or chess and having a grand old time. Jason Jackson with this afternoon's Kia card. Kia Motors, the power to surprise. We focus in on Carlos Boozer, who is back. He missed 44 straight games this season with serious left leg issues, a quad strain, and a scope on that very same knee. Coach Sloan believes that Boozer is still trying to find himself on the court. He's done a nice job here in his resident home of Miami thus far. Eight points and five rebounds. Boozer had played in eight of the last nine games, and the Jazz won all but one. Sloan says winning is the bottom line, so he's not going to worry about the progress of Boozer. Only six games after returning from knee surgery, Boozer suffered a minor setback with a sprained right ankle that kept him from playing against Toronto last Saturday. You put it all together, and you can understand being rusty and problems adjusting to the team. The team had been together and playing a certain way, and all of a sudden, Boozer comes back. It changes a little, but it did knock the team off their winning stride, Eric and Tony. Now, Jackson was another one of those formerly injured players, Andre Karolinko, that started the second quarter with his first score for Utah. And then Mario Chalmers comes back, gets his first score for Miami. The Jazz are up 10. Here's Karolinko, the Russian rocket, missing the wing jumper. James Jones down with a rebound. You add Carlos Bruce to any lineup, and it's going to improve it. And once he gets over the rustiness of being out. He'd open the second quarter with Chalmers, Jones, McClure, Beasley, and Luther Head. Beasley's short jumper hits front rim. McClure lost the rebound of Paul Millsap. Did he have one starter in the game now with Chalmers out there? Obviously a different combination because he walked. Good call by the official. Luther Head, anytime Luther's on the court now, any combination is new for the Heat. It's the first time he's in a Heat uniform. There is Andre Kirilenko, the slender six foot nine inch, eight year veteran out of the Soviet Union. Formerly a first-team all-defensive player in 06. This year, he's averaging 12 points and five rebounds a game. Jazz have been ahead by as many as 12. The Heat's biggest lead was two. Luther Head, the 6-3 guard, making his Heat debut today as Beasley fires and connects. Four points from Michael. The Heat are within eight. Luther Head picking up his first Miami assist, playing in his first NBA game this year since the 10th of January. He was waived a couple of weeks ago by the Houston Rockets and quickly scooped up by Miami. He made me feel old, Eric. I said something to him. He said, yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> That's just polite. I know. Nice rebound by Jamal McClure in the elbow swing to keep Karolinko away. Two minutes in, second period here in Miami. Chalmers driving on Knight who reached in and committed the foul. Yeah, you know, Chalmers is very good at probing with his dribble. Change of pace dribble, both left or right, getting into the painted area, making good decisions. 
Heat fans, bring your Benny Honorisi to the Verizon Wireless Ticket Office right here at the American Airlines Arena, and you get a very special buy one ticket, get one ticket free offer for the March Heat home game against Memphis and Orlando. It's not valid with any other offer. Restrictions do apply, and it is subject to availability. For more information, visit heat.com. Mario Chalmers averaging just under 10 points a game in his rookie year. Has already set a Heat rookie record with his 89 triples. He does have four points all in the second quarter. Heater within six after trailing moments ago by a dozen. And Millsap hitting the soft one-hander. Paul Millsap in his third year at a Louisiana Tech. A guy who stepped in, filled the void when Boozer went down with an injury. Millsap averaging 14 points, nine boards a game this year. A very competent player. Head fakes the three. Dribble drives past Corvin. Sets up McClure. And the rebound brought down by Andre Kirilenko with the Jazz up by eight. Kirilenko, a valuable weapon, especially on the defensive end. He could guard almost anyone on the floor on any given night. Tries to block every shot by the opponent, no matter where it is. He's always going out there with those long arms and, a, and an improved offensive player. Millsap ripping the rebound away from Michael Beasley. Last touch by Miami. Paul Millsap, a guy who has a history of rebounding. He's the only Division I player in NCAA history to lead his team in rebound, to lead the NCAA in rebounding three consecutive years. He did it at Carmelone's alma mater, Louisiana Tech. In today's game, the Heat have only six games left at home. As a matter of fact, Miami plays nine of their next 12 on the road, including the next three, beginning tomorrow afternoon in Philadelphia. 76ers with Samuel Dallabare inside. Boston awaiting Miami. The Celtics right behind the Cleveland Cavaliers in the East will host Miami Wednesday. Lawrence Frank and his net still hoping they can secure that eighth playoff spot in the East. They are among several teams a half game behind the Bucks for the number eight spot. And the fourth game on that road trip, four straight on the road for Miami in Detroit on Sunday afternoon. It's time for the Hyundai Road Ahead. Save on every Hyundai with up to $6,000 cash back. Zero down is available at even 0% financing this week at your Hyundai deal. Eric Reed, Jason Jackson, and the coach Tony Fiorentino, along with our Sun Sports crew. Thanks for joining us on this Saturday afternoon in Miami of travel on Kyle Corver. Well, the turnovers have been a little bit costly for Utah. They have six, but the Jazz shooting 58% in this first half and ahead of Miami by eight points. Good defense by Luther Head that time. He forced Corver into moving his pivot foot. Chalmers, Jones, Beasley, McGlure. And Luther Head on the floor for Miami. Head getting his first minutes, and they've been extended minutes in this second quarter. And you see what Coach Spolster does. He goes through Beasley when Wade's not on the floor, comes out of the timeout with a set play. Beasley draws the foul. Paul Millsap picking up his second foul on the second foul on the Jazz in this quarter. Well, Heat fans, if you want to know what it what it feels like to be a Heat player, then get drafted and become the Miller Lite player for a day. Here's how you do it. Visit Heat.com and enter for your chance to win a pair of VIP Heat tickets, one day's worth of an NBA's rookie salary, a one-year supply of Miller Lite, and many more great prizes. Log on to Heat.com right now and enter to win. Michael Beasley makes both. Beasley has six points off the bench in this first half. And a Heat foul here is on Luther Head. Luther Head was a second-team all-rookie player when he averaged almost nine points and made 113 triples for the Houston Rockets. And then two years ago in his second year, he averaged 11 points a game and hit 177 from downtown. And what Luther does for the Heat, Eric, is that he gives Dwayne Wade a little more rest on the bench. You can, you can keep him there because you got a veteran guy that can come in as the backup point guard. And, uh, you know, especially with a game tomorrow, all those minutes that... Uh, that Dwayne's been playing. He's in the top nine, I believe it is, in the league in minutes played. So it gives him a little more of a rest. And Coach Luther had the two very good years to start, but then last year, under eight points a game with 79 threes. This year, he lost minutes to, among others, 
Von Wafer of the Houston Rockets. This year he's averaging under five points on under 40% shooting. Look, you saw the graphic, 39% from the three-point line for his career. It's a good situation for him. Four points for Andre Kirilenko off Utah's bench. But Jazz ahead by eight. And good, quick first step. Chalmers down the lane. Nice dish from McClure, who put it home. Uh, good moves by Chalmers. End head, draw and kick, draw and kick. Find the McClure down low. Six-point lead for Utah. Darren Williams driving in. Will the bucket count? I think not. No, I think Foul it was came outside. before the shot. Yep. And the foul is on Luther Head. You can see that uh, the draw and kick, as Chalmers gets into the lane area, I mean, that head gets into the, uh, the lane area, then he hits Chalmers, who came from behind, and then he hits uh, McGlure. So it was good draw and kick by two guys, good ball movement and body movement by the Heat. Kyle Korver off a nice shot fake that sent the defender flying. Korver connects. He's three for three, has seven points. The Jazz are ahead by eight, and Utah is shooting 60% in the first half. Jermaine O'Neal just came in for Miami, replacing Jamal McGlure. Ed faking on the three. Five on the shot clock for Luther. Three for Beasley. Two for Beasley. And the rebound tipped by Corver back to Jermaine O'Neal. Fresh shot clock for Miami. James Jones down low affected that. He was in the inside, and he can, it's only appropriate that he should get the three-pointer there. Good job by Jones allowing O'Neal to get the offensive rebound. The 11th triple this year for James Jones. Miami gets their third triple of the day. Down five, and Millsap has it bounce off. James Jones outlets the rebound. A very active James Jones at both ends of the floor. Under seven minutes left, second quarter. Nice pass by Head. Jermaine O'Neal drops in the jumper. Seven points for Jermaine O'Neal, and Luther Head doing a nice job of getting the basketball into the right hand. You know, Eric, the tendency by a guy, first game for a team, wants to impress, tries to do too much. Luther Head's playing within himself, not trying to do too much and doing a good job. Basket counts for Darren Williams, the foul against Michael Beasley. Uh, Darren Williams does it against everybody. But Luther Head, as you mentioned, Eric, doing a good job off the bench. Good pick and roll. Nice pass to Jermaine. He's got that eight, that, that little 10, 12 foot baseline J. And as you mentioned, Luther Head doing a real nice job off the bench. You know, Tony, we talked a lot about Utah's injuries. Carlos Boozer missing 45 games, Kirilenko missing 15, Matt Harpering 14, and Darren Williams. He's missed 14 games this year, including the first 13 when he was recovering from a sprained left ankle. But Jazz having players step up in all of those occasions, they kept winning even with some of their best players out with injury. Yeah, when he won in Utah earlier in the season, yeah, Darren Williams was coming off that sprained ankle, so he wasn't 100%. And you look at the myriad of Utah injuries to key guys. And still, they're 41 and 24. They've won 12 of their last 13 games. Yeah, but the guy who's always been there is Jerry Sloan, of course. Well, they were 26 and 22 through the month of January, but they turned the season around, winning 15 of their last 17 games. Three to shoot. Chalmers from downtown. Kaboom! Uh, good shot uh, awareness by James Jones and Chalmers on that play. Mario Chalmers with the 90th. Triple number 90 of his rookie year. And there you see Karolanko is being guarded by Chalmers. You know, when they come at you in transition, you got to pick up the closest guy. And the Heat now are out of sync defensively because they never were able to match up with who they wanted to, and it results in a three by a four. Time scoring record, Alonzo Mourning set it March 30th, 2007. So with 9,459 points in 593 games, Dwayne Wade started the day 20 points away. This is his 380th game. So if he breaks the record today, he'll have done it in 213 fewer games than Alonzo. Dwayne Wade has nine points on four of seven shooting. So he's 11 away from tying and 12 away from becoming the Miami Heat's all-time scoring leader. Eric, how about the Heat with a backcourt of Chalmers and Head uh, in this quarter, a little over six minutes. The Heat was down 10 when Wade 
uh, in between quarters. Wade went out after the first quarter, and now the Heat are down six. So they've cut four points off that deficit without Wade in the lineup. And Dwayne Wade just picked up an offensive foul, setting an illegal screen. And D. Wade getting a nice rest. Half the second quarter, he's been on the bench. He has nine. Chalmers and Jermaine O'Neal each with seven. Darren Williams has nine points. Carlos Boozer, eight for Utah. Oh, court barrels in. Offensive foul. And Coach Jermaine O'Neal draws his 10th charge in his 13th Miami game. He's the league's fifth leading shot blocker, but he can also step in there and draw that charge, as you mentioned, Eric. Fits right into the heat culture defensively. He'll get in front, way in front of the restricted area. He's got position. Perfect job right there. At Marooney.com net cam replay. Brought to you by Marooney in South Florida. When you need a car, truck, or van, who are you going to call? Call 1-877-MARUNI. And in fairness to Jermaine, he has said repeatedly that drawing offensive fouls part of his game repertoire for his entire career. He takes pride in that, so it does fit right into the way the Heat preach defense here in Miami. Yeah, he got over anxious on that screen and was moving as his uh, teammate Wade came off of the screen, so he got called for a moving screen offensive foul. By the way, Jermaine O'Neal's first foul, he does have a shot-blocking streak of 17 consecutive games. He hasn't had one yet today. Second best in the NBA to Tyrus Thomas of the Chicago Bulls. Six-point lead for Utah, five minutes left in the first half. This is Carlos Boozer against O'Neal. Boozer threw it away. Good defense by O'Neal and Hazard. That's seven Utah turnovers, eight Utah turnovers in the first half. Wade dribble drives through for the jumper for two. How pretty is that? That time he weaved his way to the foul line, so he didn't have an opening to the rim, so he used that step back dribble and buried the J. Wade has 11, 10 points from becoming Miami's all-time scoring leader. Be great if it happens here at home today. Well, nice looking oh, shot man. there. Kyle Corver, he is true. The six-year veteran out of Creighton. Corver has nine points, Tony, off the bench on four of four shooting. Very good shooter. And you mentioned Wade. The Heat would like him to break that record in the first half. Jermaine O'Neal missing on the dunk. Came up a little short. Okor now with a rebound. He doesn't have that lift that he had before. I think that knee is not as solid as he would like it to be. When he gets inside, he's got to put it up, but he can't dunk it as yet. Wade against Kirilenko, what a play. <laughs> it counts, and the foul. Told you he had a shot in the first half to break the record. How about that play? Changes pace, behind the back dribble, Kirilenko, one of the better defenders in the NBA. Wade goes by him and puts in the layup. Watch this again. Change of pace, right there. He stopped, went again, and then puts it in. Wow, that is pretty. You don't want D. D Wade coming at you with some momentum because he just makes great decisions, that great ability to change pace. He can finish with either hand. We know he's one of the best finishers in the NBA. That was D. Wade in overdrive. 13 points for Dwayne is Kirilenko. Uh, he may have a wind burn from how fast Wade blew by him. Kirilenko sits down. Well, like most good shot blockers, Eric, they're usually blocking shots off the ball, not the guy they're guarding. Well, this chance sounds familiar. Every time D. Wade goes to the free throw line, Heat fans in unison recite MVP. Wade has 14 points. Miami, for the third time in this quarter, has cut the lead to three. And for the first time, the Heat come back in a 2-3 zone off the made free throw. Okor was fouled by Jermaine O'Neal. The Heat were down by 12. Just 15 seconds into this quarter at 31 to 19. That was the second foul on Jermaine O'Neal. Miami's over the limit. Well, the American Airlines Arena will be rocking when the 2009 playoffs roll into town. Heat fans, don't miss your chance to get in on it. Tickets will be scarce. The games always sell out quickly. The only way to guarantee seats for every Heat home playoff game is to become a Heat season ticket holder. Reserve your Heat season tickets for next season with a $250 per seat deposit because your deposit makes it possible for you to purchase playoff tickets before they go on sale this year to the general public in April. For more information, call 786-777-HOOP. Ticket sales reps are standing by in the Heat looking to make the playoffs for the 13th time in 21 years. And for the fifth time in the last six seasons. Eric, it doesn't matter who the opponent is. Fans are coming by in droves to the arena because of D. Wade. He's worth the price of admission. 
And th th today we got a 1 p.m. game, which is usually not a good game for fans to attend on a nice day in Miami. This, this arena's got a big crowd here today. O'Cour has four points. The Jazz lead by four. Wade, catch and dribble. Udonis from the wing. Oh, even with the Boozer closeout. Haslam able to connect on his first field goal of the day. Miami's within two, the closest they've been here in the second quarter. Williams got by Wade. Somehow found Corver for three. And the rebound trickles off the hands of Udonis Haslam. Good closeout by the Heat. Corver's not getting open looks on the last two shots. It throws you off a little bit when you got a guy running at you as opposed to being wide open. Watch the closeout by Jamari Moon. See? Corver did not really get the rhythm he wanted on that shot. He was distracted a little bit by Moon, and he missed it, but the Heat didn't corral the rebound. Miami trailed by 10 after one quarter. We mentioned by 12 early on in the second. Dwayne Wade got a block on Darren Williams. A rather vicious block from behind. The Heat with a chance to tie it or take the lead. Best shot blocking guard in the NBA since he came in the league six years ago. Corver comes down with Wade's missed shot. Here comes Darren Williams. Williams picked up by Chalmers. A collision and a score. So Darren Williams has 11 points and six assists. The talented young man from Illinois has made five of his first seven shots. His Utah Jazz are shooting 54% here in the first half. And they've not rebounded the heat by eight right now. Wade, off contact with Brewer, still makes the jumper. Dwayne Wade, 16 first half points, five away from becoming the Heat's all-time scoring leader. And Brewer hurt his ankle, Eric. He's limping up the floor, wincing as he comes up. So let's see how that plays out. Boozer misses on the flip. Boozer keeps it alive, but it comes down to Mario Chalmers. Wade tapped it away. Under two minutes left. In the half, Chalmers missing on the three, and O'Cour down with a rebound. A three that would have put Miami out in front. Ronnie Brewer, top side to Williams. Minute 38 to go, second quarter. Williams using the boozer screen. That opens up Corver for three. Well, Kyle Corver, he might as well park his Winnebago right on that baseline. That's his spot. Corver with 12 points in 14 minutes off the bench. He's made five of his seven shots, including a couple of triples. And Dwayne Wade, 16 points here in the first half. Watch him bury this shot from the court, from the mid range. And then he's five points away from becoming the all time leader in points scored for the Heat, passing Alonzo Mourning. That's exactly what Eric Spolster refers to it as, Jax, a brand instituted by Jerry Sloan. It's his way. And the Jazz have been so good at home. They've won 11 straight games at home, and they haven't lost two in a row since a four-game losing streak near the end of January. So losing their last game in Atlanta, not a good thing for Miami. Kyle Korver hasn't been healthy for Miami either. He's six for eight off the bench, has a team-leading 14 points. D. Wade leads all scorers with 16, four points from tying Alonzo's scoring record, five points from becoming the Heat's all-time leader. And Make it two points away. Dwayne Wade triples for the second time here in the first half. Coach, how about a 19-point first half for Dwayne Wade we, today? We told you he had a shot to do it in the first half. He needed 21. He's got 19. That's a... Uh, 14 foul, so the, the Heat will take it on the side. And tonight, for the first time, the first time this season, we see Luther Head and Dwayne Wade in the backcourt together. Loose ball foul is on Kyle Corver, his first foul of this game. Now well, stay tuned, coming up for the Chevy Halftime Show. Ira Winderman will join Jason Jackson in the Chevy Halftime Studios to discuss the NBA's future, which is a look at the best collegiate players. Jackson will also interview Heat assistant coach David Fisdale. All of it and more on the Chevy Halftime Show. 23 seconds left, first half. Jermaine O'Neal. Kirilenko reached in, committed his second foul. Eric, what Dwayne Wade did right there when he passed the ball to Udonis, he backed up the half court to take yeah. Brewer with him. Now it becomes a four on four game with the Heat. There's more area to, to move. So sometimes Dwayne likes to do that for his teammates. O'Neal winds up drawing the foul. Watch this again. He's going to pass it to Udonis. Now he's going to back up and take Brewer with him. Now it becomes a four on four. There's more room to manipulate you know, the defense. And uh, O'Neal gets to the foul line. Another example of Wade's intelligence in a team way. 
And Heat fans, we are all sitting on the edge of Miami Heat history with his next field goal. Dwayne Wade will become a Miami Heat's all-time scoring leader. He will move past Alonzo Mourning in 213 fewer games. I know Alonzo is going to be very happy to hand this baton over to D. Wade. Yeah, you never hate to have somebody, you never like to have somebody break your record, but if they're going to do it, then someone as great as D. Wade, is, uh, he deserves it. Yeah, when, when he does. Eight of nine from the free throw line here in the first half. They are down two. The Heat's only lead of this game came on the very first score of the game, two to nothing. They've only had one lead change. Williams with a beautiful scoop that is batted in by Brewer. What a play. Brewer. Ronnie Brewer skying up there with the trees. Here's Wade from the backcourt. That could do it. Nope. <laughs> jumper, and you can see there's so many different ways that he can score. It's impossible to stop him. Third quarter here at the Heat's house is underway. Okur pitching back to Ronnie Brewer. It's Brewer, Williams, Okor, C.J. Miles, and Carlos Boozer for the Jazz. That's a good field goal for Darren Williams. He now has 13 points to go along with eight assists. Williams has made six of his ten shots, and you can clearly see why he is regarded as one of the top one, two, or three point guards in professional basketball. Yeah, you can see he has a great pace. Wade drives. Oh, I'm sorry, Tony. Wade drives in. He missed it. Yeah, he has a great pace to his game, doesn't he, Darren Williams? He can speed it up when he has to, but he also plays at a at a speed that, the, that, that Coach uh, Sloan wants him to. Here's Wade ahead of the field. He did it! Dwayne Wade has just become Miami's all-time scoring leader. He earned it. He assumes his rightful position as the best scorer in the history of the Miami Heat. He breaks Alonzo Mourning's record in 213 fewer games. And you get the feeling it's only about maybe half of what he's going to score in his career. Well, Miami down by four. Here comes Chalmers. Okor knocked it free. Haslam couldn't hold on. Moon deflection to Mario. And it rolls in. How about that sequence right there? <laughs> the Heat are within two. Well, Dwayne Wade's record-setting basket coming with 11-10 remaining in this third quarter. It's only appropriate that he did it on a dunk. And Jermaine O'Neal continues his shot-blocking streak now to an 18th consecutive game. Yeah, D. Wade with his 104th dunk of the year, setting the all-time scoring record. And Mario Chalmers has even the game at 57. You love the way Chalmers goes right at Darren Williams. You mentioned one of the top two or three point guards in the NBA. But you know that Chalmers not going back down from anybody. Well, this is the first time today the game has been tied. A 6-0 heat run to open up this third quarter. Jermaine O'Neal drives in. Haslam collects the rebound. O'Neal puts it home. Uh, good assist to Udonis. He went up. He got caught under the board. Found O'Neal even though it was tight quarters. And O'Neal finished. Well, Jermaine O'Neal now with 11 points. The Heat have their first lead since the game was 2 to nothing, And the Heat have a new all-time scoring leader. That's a 20-second timeout for Utah. And right now they're going to let the crowd know about D-Wade. Let's listen in. Dwayne Wade has become the leading scorer in Miami Heat history. Congratulations, Dwayne Wade. Well, we're so happy for Dwayne Wade and for the Heat Nation to witness this with us. Happier yet, it happened at home, and these fans that love Dwayne Wade can celebrate it with him. And D. Wade on a breakaway layup, a dunk right here. As I said, only appropriate that he should become the all-time scorer in Heat history with a dunk. There it is, baby. And, oh, by the way, with this record-setting field goal on the slam dunk, Dwayne Wade also continues his 20-point streak to a 21st consecutive game. And the Heat have only their second lead of the day. The first game at 2 to nothing. Right now it's 59-57. And a lead that didn't last very long. Darren Williams with his 57th triple this year. Puts Utah back in front by one. Williams now has 16 points to lead the Jazz. Gary Sloan comes out of the timeout. And goes to his stellar point guard and he delivers. Darren Williams, All-NBA second team a year ago. Gold medal winner along with D. Wade, Carlos Boozer and the rest of... 
the Redeem team. Darren Williams picking up that foul. I like what Coach Fisdale said at halftime when Jacks asked him, why does that pick and roll work so well? He goes, well, they had Stockton and Malone. <laughs> now they got Williams and Boozer. Darren Williams, who left the Illinois Illini team after his junior year when they went 37-2 and and made it all the way to the NCAA championship game where his team lost to North Carolina. Okur fouling Jermaine O'Neal. That seems to be a favorite move for O'Neal coming across the lane for the jump hook. Okor picks up his third foul. He does. We told you that uh, before that when he first came to the heat, he would give you characteristics of the players, the new players. His characteristic is in the low post. He likes to turn and face the player that he's got, that's guarding him and then take him off the dribble right or left, usually trying to get into the lane area. He'll either shoot the right hand J off of the uh, right shoulder or he'll take his man into the lane for that little jump hook. And he's very assertive and aggressive with the move and usually gets to the foul line with it. Well, Miami's 9 of 10 at the line today. You know, Jermaine O'Neal made his first free throw this afternoon, which gave him 15 consecutive, then missed on his second, which ended his longest free throw made streak of the season. But he's 4 of 5 from the line, 4 of 9 from the field. And Jermaine O'Neal now has... 13 points, and guess who is in the Heat's house? Yes. Now the number two all-time scorer in Heat history, still number one in so many hearts, and you can see Alonzo Mourning graciously accepting the inevitable. Here's C.J. Miles, who tripled twice in the first half. Moon saves it in the wave. Miami ahead, 61 to 68, 40 left third quarter here in Miami. Heat and 76ers from Philly tomorrow afternoon at 1. And you can enjoy it right here on Sun Sports. Jermaine O'Neal, good chemistry with Wade. He was free for the pass, and he drew a foul. Yep, good pass by D. Wade. Threaded the needle there. D. Wade doesn't get an assist on the play, but it's one of those intangibles where you're getting your teammate to the foul line. Ronnie Brew picking up his second foul. Third team foul on the Jazz in this third quarter. Heat season ticket holders, imagine the look on your friends' faces when you show them this year's Heat team poster featuring none other than you. And that's reason number 19 why you should renew your Heat season tickets. The 09-2010 season ticket renewal process is underway. Renewed by the March 16th deadline so you can continue to enjoy exclusive once-in-a-lifetime experiences such as being photographed and featured in the Heat team poster. If you have any questions about the renewal process, don't hesitate. Contact Season Ticket Services at 786-777-1400. Oh, Jermaine, unusual. Missed a free throw. Uh, he's missed a couple today. Jermaine O'Neal with 14 Miami points. The Heater ahead by two. Carlos Boozer knocks it down. Ten points for a two-time Olympic player. Carlos Boozer, three years at Duke. He was a sophomore on their 2001 NCAA championship team. Yeah, the former Duke, he made that look easy. Boozer has 10 points and eight rebounds in this game. He's belt to belt with O'Neal, took the pump fake, and then committed the foul. And Coach Jermaine O'Neal, he does it with that nice head and shoulders fake. He is drawing repeated fouls on Utah front court players. Well, you know, you, you plant seeds from earlier in the game. He made a couple of jumpers off that right shoulder, as we told you about. And then he took his man off the dribble the last time. So he had Carlos Boozer going betwixt and between on that play. And he used the, the, the past knowledge that Boozer had of, the, of his plays and drew the foul. Now it looks like they're in that 2-3 zone, Utah. First foul on Boozer as Moon fires up a three. Kaboom! Yeah, the Heat read it well, knew what they were up against. I'm sure they worked on that yesterday when they had their shoot around. Jamario's first points of the day coming on his fourth shot. He's got three points with five rebounds. That was his 53rd triple this year. A steal by Moon. A three-point lead for Miami, their biggest of the day. Nice pass. Jermaine O'Neal puts it home. And another hookup between Wade and O'Neal. That bread and butter play by the Heat. It's either J Jermaine O'Neal with the Wade or it's Udonis with Wade. They do a great job of, 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 of slipping or pick and roll to the basket, and Wade finds them. Carlos Boozer launching. Mario Chalmers runs it down. The Heat outscoring Utah in this quarter so far, 16 to 7. There you see uh, O'Neal again. He faced his man. Now he turns his back to him. Boozer knocked it off the leg of Jermaine O'Neal. Utah takes it over. Jermaine O'Neal, uh, did he get hit in the head or not? Look at the headband. 
16-point day so far for J.O. Imagine telling the ref, look at my headband, I got hit. <laughs> They're not going to buy that. Carlos Boozer, 17-footer, bottoms up. Oh, he, he doesn't usually miss that shot. 12 points for Boozer, who's averaging 16 and a half this year and shooting 52% last year. Boozer played in 81 games, averaged a career-high 21 points, also had 10 rebounds a game a year ago. Yeah, it's tough coming off injuries when you have to get into shape during while the games are going on. Jermaine O'Neal off his own rebound. Missed the short jumper, but Boozer lost it out of bounds and then just put his hand right into the camera. Michael Beasley again. what happened to Jermaine O'Neal on this play. He felt he got fouled on this. They called the ball off of him. He felt he got hit in the face. Yeah, you can't see from the angle we had. If it wasn't, it was very faint. C.J. Miles reaching across the body of Mario Chalmers, picking up his first foul. And, Coach, before Miami could pick up a single team foul in this third quarter, Utah has accumulated five. Michael Peasley is in. Jermaine O'Neal is out. 16 points and four boards for Jermaine O'Neal in today's game. When that happens, it usually means one team's being more assertive of going to the rim, more so than the other team. And uh, we got Beasley in the game, as you mentioned. That means Udonis moves to that center spot. Beasley's the power forward. And then you got your three perimeter players stay the same in uh, Wade, Chalmers, and Moon. You know, part of Miami's improved offense has been their much improved free throw shooting. They're 13 for 15 in this game. Chalmers has 13 points. Miami ahead by five. Miles for three. And Michael Beasley comes down with his first rebound today in his 11th minute of action. Tough shot by Miles. Step back, Jay, under duress from the three-point line. Wade was fouled by Carlos Boozer there. Yeah, Wade used that screen by Udonis real well. He split the defenders like he usually does, got in the lane and drew the foul. So Carlos Boozer, the two-time All-Star, picking up his second foul, both coming in this third quarter. And Dwayne Wade to the line with 21 points today. El Heat fans on the next edition of Inside the Heat. They'll look into the lives of Heat rookies Michael Beasley and Mario Chalmers. You can watch the players tour the Everglades and learn more about their lives growing up. It's Inside the Heat, Michael Beasley and Mario Chalmers tomorrow at 4 o'clock following the Heat and the Sixers game from Philadelphia right here on Sun Sports. For preview of tomorrow's Inside the Heat show, log on to sunsportstv.com and click on the Miami Heat link. Here yeah, the Heat jumps on a plane right after this game, flies to Philadelphia, starts a four-game road trip. 14 of 17 at the foul line today. Dwayne Wade with 22 points. Miami's up by six. Largest lead of the afternoon for the Heat. And Chalmers knocked it away. Well, the Heat up by six. We get a timeout with 542 left in the third quarter. A third quarter where Dwayne Wade surpassed Alonzo Mourning as Miami's all-time scoring leader. When we come back, Jason Jackson will talk to the man Dwayne Wade just passed. As Miami's all-time scoring leader, he just moved past Alonzo Mourning in 213 fewer games. A great one passing another great one. And as promised, Jason Jackson sitting courtside next to Heat legend Alonzo Mourning, a man who will have his number hanging from the rafters by the end of the month. Eric, thank you very much. Here with uh, Miami Heat's number two all-time scorer. Uh, Alonzo, knowing the relationship you have with Dane, being a fellow champion, being a, a philanthropic figure with him, lifting him up as well, I imagine you're okay. He's the man that's replacing you. Listen to me. I'm excited for him. Uh, I'm just glad I'm here to witness that particular moment. You know, he's probably playing some of the best basketball I've seen from any player in a very, very long time, you know. And um, if anybody had to take that torch, I was rooting for him to do it. He did it on a dunk, so that's, that's appropriate. A little chin-up, too, on there. Very, very appropriate. You know, records, records are made to be broken, and um, I knew that it was only a matter of time that he was going to do it, especially with the way he's putting the ball in the basket right now. Do you have an official opinion on this MVP debate that's rolling around now that America has decided that Dwayne is playing at the same level of, as LeBron and Kobe? You know what? We could be here all day talking about uh, my opinions about the MVP. Uh, voting, you know, because you know, I felt like I should have won it back in the 90s, you know, but it's so political and it's unfortunate that it is that way, 
And I don't have anything against the media, but I don't think the media should have anything to do with choosing who the MVP is. I think the coaches and the players should have that decision as well as the people in the front office. You know, but um, I think D. Wade is very much deserving of being the MVP of this league this year, you know, just based on his leadership uh, on and off the court, you know, and the impact that he's having on his team, you know, and how he's making all his other teammates better, you know. I think he's very much deserving of getting the award this year. Before we started our conversation, Eric alluded to a great event that's coming down the avenue. In just about two weeks, number 33 is going up in the rafters. Uh, as the time nears us, how is the excitement building in you? Well, you know, I really don't want to think about it, you know, because um, Jason is very bittersweet to me, you know, and um, obviously, you know, part of me wants to still be out there and, and, and trying to help my teammates, you know, uh, possibly, you know, win another championship. And then the other part of me, to tell you the truth, and I don't miss how I how I felt waking up in the morning after games. <laughs> well, yesterday we were in the right place at the golf course watching Tiger. We'll be there next playing with each other. It's good yeah, to see you as always. Good to see you too, man. Thank you. All right. All right. Eric and Tony, back over to you. Thank you, Jax. You know, for years we love to see Alonzo Mourning scowl. Now nothing makes us happier than seeing Alonzo Mourning smile. We want to thank Alonzo not only for all he's done for the Miami Heat, all he did for us, Coach, yes. on our beautiful tournament, golf tournament, and uh, call of the game dinner the other night. We awarded Zoe's wife, the lovely and talented Tracy Wilson Morning with our Community Service Award, and the Morning family enjoyed the night with us. They really stepped up for us. No doubt. You know, uh, we had an unbelievable day and evening uh, that day. We raised a lot of money for two great causes, Day School Athletic Foundation and Lawrence Kids, and can't say enough about Scott Rothstein and Ron Book, and you know, you and I were there, and a guy like Alonzo Mourning, the way he supported that event people like that it's just unbelievable and that uh, we want to thank everybody the committee members and everyone involved with it and uh, the award was very meaningful because it was Sonny Hirsch the 28 year voice of the Miami Hurricanes that originally brought Hank Goldberg into the profession of radio no, it was a great and, uh, and we are appreciative to everyone who helped us do that we're going to get bigger and better next year and uh, just to go back to what Zoe said, Eric, I agree with Zoe. I think they should take the voting out of the out of the media's hands and give it to basketball people because not all, not everyone watches all the games. You know, your tendency is to vote for guys who are on, uh, who are on national TV every night. And you know, the debate right now is you got you got Kobe and LeBron leading their teams with the best records in the NBA or near it. And is it easier to play with very? Is is it, is it harder to play with guys that are? talented and and stay on top in both you know in both conferences or is it is it what er, what the uh, what the Dwayne Wade's doing where he's got two rookies and two second year players that he has to lead and you know in the many statistical areas that Wade is playing so well so to me that's the the, the debate uh, it's splitting hairs it really is because you're talking about three of the game's all-time greats who are all having outstanding years LeBron and Kobe are doing it with conference leading teams Dwayne Wade has lifted his team to 20 wins more uh, and tonight he has 26 points but I want to go back to what you and Zoe both talked about having the coaches and players rather than the media voting on the MVP I agree with that too but you can't just say on the MVP you either vote on all the no, awards that's true. let them all vote yeah or, I agree or with none that. so no I agree with that it's not as simple as just saying let them vote for the MVP because some media people are, are voting based on what they read not what they see you know it becomes different it's a different way to players vote. would do the same though players don't see every game either so there's no perfect way to fix an imperfect system and a very subjective thing such as voting for an MVP or a defensive player of the year even a rookie of the year Kyle Korver knocked it away from Moon and this is Darren Williams with Brewer to his left he finds him and Brewer puts it home how about Darren Williams waiting till the perfect instant to make the pass hey he picked up his eight assists on that play he's a guy as we mentioned only he and Chris Paul averaging double his ninth assist on the play he's only they're the only two guys averaging double figure assists in the NBA Ron Brewer has 12 points in this game. The Heat lead by two. Head finds Haslam. And Wade missing on the putback dunk attempt. D. Wade with 27 points in this afternoon's game. Brewer. This is Boozer from 20. And the rebound down to Udonis Haslam. That's six rebounds for Haslam. Three other Heat players have five rebounds, including Wade and Jamario Moon. And Jermaine O'Neal, for that matter. Beasley against Millsap, and Michael draws a foul. Michael Beasley will have a couple of free throws waiting in. 
after this timeout here in Miami with the Heat holding off Utah. It's a two-point lead at the moment. Brown scored 51 points in Cleveland's 126-123 overtime win at Sacramento. The fifth career game for LeBron James of over 50 points in a game. He's got three triple doubles in a row on that West Coast trip. And it ended with a 50-point game. How about that? Yes. And meanwhile, this quarter, Eric, the Heat have out rebound in Utah 12-5. to five. That's why the Heat have this four-point lead. And by the way, the reasons. last guy to have four straight triple doubles, a guy named Michael Drew. Kyle Corver knocks that in. Corver has 16 points in this game and 19 minutes off the bench. Kyle Corver has made seven of his nine shots. Tony, the Heat holding Utah off, but still allowing 53% shooting to the Jazz. Haslam hands off to Wade with under two minutes left in the third. Gets it back, and an offensive foul. Corver took the hit and drew the charge on Udonis. That's Haslam's first foul. Uh, the Heat bench doesn't agree with it. Let's watch this again. Man. I think the Heat bench thought he was moving on that play. I mean, they had a better angle than we did. On, on that replay, it looked like a pretty good call. But if he was moving laterally to his left, then it wasn't. So you got to go with the call. The ref made it. Just the seventh turnover on the Heat today. They had forced nine. And at 40 left, third quarter, Darren Williams, nice change of direction. Missed the jumper, Boozer with a rebound. That's Millsap underneath. And good defense down on the end line by Jamario Moon. And they will jump it up. Haywood Workman could not discern who knocked it out of bounds. So Moon will be in a jump ball situation with the six foot eight inch Paul Millsap. That's a good call by Workman. Don't guess. If you're not sure, let him jump it up. Haywood hey, Workman, former NBA point guard for a number of seasons out of Oral Roberts University. Spent time with Indiana, Atlanta, and others. And it's great to see the transition from player to official. Another guy that did it, Leon Wood. Bernie Fryer coach. Do you think that's a, a natural evolution going from play, player to official? Well, if you want to stay in the game, you can coach, you can referee. Yeah, I'm surprised that more guys haven't done it. There's only been three that we know of in, in many years. Now, the officials are trying to discern, I think, the, the shot clock right now. They're going to decide. I think that's what they're talking about. Because, you know, when the offensive team, uh, it, and when there's a jump ball, the clock stays that way for the offensive team. I think, all right, see, uh, let's see, we see where, my, um, trying to look where Chalmers is going now. He's just, I mean, uh, the head. I'm going to try to hit it right there. That's where Moon's going to try to get see the two black shirts are going to try to seal their man away from the ball. And they're trying to do the, Millsap's trying to do the opposite to the white shirts. He wins the tap, Millsap. Utah down by two, 125 remaining in the third quarter here in Miami. He played the Sixers in Philadelphia tomorrow afternoon, a 1 p.m. tip right here on Sun Sports. Good help defense by Moon to knock it out of there. Three on the shot clock. Now one. Wade stripped it. Here he comes. You know, Eric, that was very good. Why close. wasn't that a shot clock violation? Luther had had it in his hands before the shot clock went off. That's a very thin line there, whether you call 24-second clock and give the ball to the Heat or let him continue. I, I think they're going to lo look at that in the offseason and maybe change the call. If it's anywhere near possession by the defense, they should let him have it rather than take away the fast break. Meanwhile, Boozer got it right back for Jerry Sloan's Jazz, plus Dwayne Wade's third foul. Carlos Boozer will go to the line with 15 points. Let's watch this again. Okay, watch the shot clock up in the right-hand corner. All right, watch Luther Head catches the ball. Up in the right-hand corner, you can see the clock right there. Okay, he's got the ball. Luther Head has the ball. The shot clock had one second on it. So that was a good call by the officials not to take away the fast break. And great camera work. Kudos to the Sun Sports camera guys and producer-director Ted Ballard. He got you a perfect look at it. A.J. Speaks doing a good job with that. Owens, here's Moon for three. And the rebound bouncing right to Corver with the Jazz down one. Brevin Knight at the throttle. Knight filling in for Darren Williams, who's on the bench with 18 points and 10 assists. Haslam pulls down the rebound. That's seven boards for Udonis. You know, when the Heat won in Utah back on December 3rd, it was a 93-89 victory. And on that game, they held the Jazz under 40% shooting. Today, the Jazz are just over 50%. 
Ray double team gets by both, finds Udonis for the jumper. He hit it. And the Heat are up three with four seconds left in the third. And Dwayne Wade with his 29 points picks up his fifth assist to go with five rebounds. And Ronnie Brewer misses a three at the end of the third quarter. Well, the third quarter might have been Miami's best quarter of the game. Back-to-back -back, 32 point quarters for Miami. A third quarter that saw Dwayne Wade assume his rightful spot as the Heat's all-time scoring leader. Quarter underway, Miami leading Utah 83 to 80. Coach, been a very good game. Yes, the crowd's into it. Every game's like a playoff game for the Heat because they want to get that fourth seed. You, you said it earlier, it's going to be difficult because Atlanta's on a long home stretch while the Heat have to go on a four game road trip. How about Luther Head driving to the basket, hitting the runner? Head in his Heat debut, he's played 17 minutes. You know, Coach, it's not only about catching Atlanta for fourth. How about just holding the number yes. five spot? The Pistons are only two games. Peace in series, Miami and Detroit. That is even at one with two games still remaining to be played. And believe it or not, the Pistons have been better since the injury to Allen Iverson. Rip Hamilton is back in the starting lineup and putting up big-time numbers for the Pistons. Yeah, they're getting more people involved. Rip Hamilton's more comfortable in that starting position. They're either going to play the Pistons next Sunday on ABC. And then they have the last game of the year at home against the Pistons. That may determine who's going to, if the Heat are going to be fifth or higher than that or lower. You know, it depends on that, maybe on that last game. Dwayne Wade getting a breather with 29 points, five rebounds, and five assists. And you know, right before that, the last road game of the season is in Atlanta. And then, the, and then right after that, the last home game with Detroit. So that, those last two games could determine where the Heat will be in the playoff picture. Well, Coach, it's speeding right by us after today. Only 17 games left for Miami. 11 of them will be on the road. And in April, the Heat play five of eight on the road. Those could be important for Miami to hold on to what they have. They're going to have to start winning games on the road this year. The Heat are 12 and 18 away from South Florida. Some big games still remain to be played. They're going to have to finish strong. Yeah, he might have it be better for them if they had a West Coast swing left. He was three and two and four and three on two West Coast trips this year. Andre Kirilenko with six points. Utah's down by two. What a shootout. Jazz are at 52% for the game. The Heat are at 48%. Here's Jermaine O'Neal. The jumper is good. Uh, 18 points for Jermaine O'Neal. His best performance in a Heat uniform was his 19 at Cleveland. He did have a 36-point game in Sacramento this year, but he was wearing a Toronto Raptors jersey when he did it. That time he scored on three defenders. There were three white shirts around them. Heat by four. Their biggest lead's been six. Kirilenko. It counts. Plus a foul. Andre Kirilenko, I thought it might have been a travel. That's what I thought. Constant movement by Utah, though. They, do, they really run their offense to perfection. You've got to really watch as Kirilenko curls his man, gets into the lane area. And uh, Jermaine O'Neal was get, got there late. Watch this again. He's going to go up. Yeah, he took an extra uh, step, Eric. Three steps? Yeah, he only allowed two. He allowed one and then the second one to the rim. He took the third one to the rim. And Jermaine was there late. And Kirilenko, after missing that second free throw, did get his own rebound. Eight points for Kirilenko, along with three boards and another heat foul here. With ten minutes to play in this fourth quarter, Mario Chalmers picking up the foul. That is the first on Chalmers. The third team foul on Miami here in the first two minutes of the fourth quarter. Utah going with Brevin Knight, Andre Kirilenko, Kyle Korver, Paul Millsap, and Nemet Okur. The Heat with Head and Chalmers in the backcourt. James Jones, Michael Beasley, and Jermaine O'Neal up front. Loose ball. Who gets it? Michael Beasley does. It's important juncture here for the Heat. We wait out. They still got to generate offense, just like they did earlier at the beginning of the third quarter, uh, second quarter when Wade was out. Heat trying to sweep the season series from the Utah Jazz. If they do, it would be the fourth time in the last five years. O'Neal again. 20 points for Jermaine O'Neal. His best scoring game since joining the Heat 13 games ago. How about they took away the right shoulder? They turned over the left and buried that mid-range shot. As the Heat come back in the 2-3 zone. Oh, good attack by Utah. That was beautiful. Nice pass wow. by Kirilenko. Paul Millsap with his finish. Five points for Millsap. Eric, you know what Utah's doing against the zone? They're attacking from behind. That's one of the principles of attacking the zone. Come, come at an area where you're out of the vision, the peripheral vision of the defender. Jazz have 29 points off of their bench. 
And Beasley, well, with that dribble, he let three defenders converge on him. Kirilenko on the drive. What a finish for Andre Kirilenko. That was a power finish. That really was. He had Jermaine O'Neal trying to block the shot, and he finished strong. Well, we are tied for the fourth time today. 8.38 remaining in the game. Chalmers with a burst. He lost the ball. And out of bounds off Utah. With 8.33 remaining in the fourth quarter. Timeout here at the American Airlines Arena. Game is even at 89. Uh, why is this game tied? Good passing by the Jazz. You see Karolenko passing the Millsap inside. And then Karolenko on that strong drive to the basket. Watch as he eludes Jermaine O'Neal trying to block it. Good play. Tie game when we come back. From Toronto, Jermaine O'Neal has 20 points, 5 rebounds. He's made 7 of his 12 shots. But we're tied at 89 with 8.5 minutes remaining in the fourth quarter. Luther Head jacks it up. And the rebound comes down to Paul Millsap. Knight finds Okor. Good fake from three. Millsap blocked by O'Neal, but that's a goaltend. And unfortunately for Miami, a goaltend by O'Neal on a shot that had no chance at going in. Oh, you're right. It would have been short, but it did hit the board, I believe. And that's why he got called on the uh, goaltend. Six consecutive points for Utah. And the Jazz have taken a two-point lead. Eight minutes remaining. D. Wade still on the bench. Now he's heading to the scorer's table. Here's O'Neal. And that comes down to Millsap, who is gobbling up rebounds. He has five off the bench. Riven Knight. Boy, that's a luxury as a backup point guard. Chalmers comes up with a steal. He'd have numbers. Four on one. And Haslam goes down on the foul by Paul Millsap. And there is an art to doing that. It was a four-on-one break for Miami. And Millsap, that's a wise move, Coach. Wasn't dirty, wasn't flagrant, no. just a smart foul. Very smart. Don't give him the layup. Put him on the foul line. Good hard call or hard foul. Watch it again. Good steal by Chalmers. Fourth best in the NBA in steals. With Wade in the backcourt there at number two. And that was Mario Chalmers' first steal today. Wade has three of them. And D. Wade has had four steals in three consecutive games, not including today. He also extended his three-point streak to an 11th straight game. He has nine consecutive games with at least one steal. And uh, Chalmers, number four overall in the league, number one among all rookies in steals. Well, the Heater 20 of 23 from the foul line in this game. Haslam has eight points and seven rebounds. We are even at 91. Seven and a half minutes left. Kirilenko underneath. Hammers it home. Andre Kirilenko, he can hurt you in so many ways on each end of the court. No doubt at 6'9 with those long arms, he's come alive here in the fourth quarter. He did not play in the first matchup between these clubs. Neither did Boozer. Today, they're both playing well. 16 points and 9 rebounds for Boozer. 12 points off the bench for Kirilenko. Eric, I think the official saw the second call right here. And I believe he was also assessed with a technical foul. Oh, uh, no, you know what? I, I, I was watching this play. When James Jones went through the lane, O'Cor gave him a shot. And I think James Jones reacted. And Bill Spooner saw the second part of the play and gave James Jones a technical foul. That is out of the ordinary for the usually mild-mannered Miami native. And that, yeah, it's usually automatic for Corver at the foul line. He's a terrific foul shooter, 89%. Watch right here as he goes. See right there, Okur gave uh, Jones a shot, and then Jones retaliated. I thought that Okur could have gotten a foul on the initial play. Well, Cal Corver converts the free throw. Corver has 17 points today. Corver twice this year has scored 20. That's his season high. Jazz ahead by three. Wade comes up short. Tries to get his own rebound back. The chase is on. Wade and Williams and a timeout for Utah. Williams called timeout while Wade was trying to get uh, tie him up. Good call by Williams. It's going to be Jazz Ball up three. A little over seven minutes left in the fourth quarter. Watch the way these guys are hustling. You don't think these guys want this game both sides? Look at the hustle that goes on here. Wade's trying to get back in it. Udonis gets after it. Williams is calling timeout as he's getting the ball. Utah ball when we come back. 
Miami Heat basketball on Sun Sports is being brought to you by Largo Honda. Still no sharks. By the Florida Lottery, the all-new billion-dollar blockbuster scratch-off game from the Florida Lottery. With over a billion dollars in prizes, you could win up to $10 million instantly. Play billion-dollar blockbuster today. And by Chevy. Find your Chevy today at ChevyDealer.com. Welcome back to the American Airlines Arena on a six-game NBA Saturday. Our game's the only matinee. There are the other games tonight in the NBA. The Bulls have lost three in a row. They're trying to chase down the Bucks and get that eighth and final playoff spot. The Denver Nuggets right now number seven in the NBA's Western Conference. Only a half game behind the Utah Jazz. All four of those games in the central time zone. Under seven minutes left in this fourth quarter. The Jazz on the move. Kirilenko misses the three. Moon brings down the rebound. Tony obviously a critical part of the game. The Jazz on a 9-2 run to take this three-point lead. 6.40 remaining in the fourth quarter. Without Daquan Cook tonight, the Heat, of, the heat bench is being outscored 36-18 to 18 as Wade gets to the rim. Well, those are Dwayne Wade's first points of the fourth quarter. He's got 31 for the game, his 32nd game this year, with at least 30 points. Almost half the Heat's games. Oh, how about that? That is vintage Utah basketball. Give and go. They get a layup. Darren Williams now with 20 points. Williams also has 10 assists. That's a... Another terrific game for one of the game's best point guards. Eric, he, this is the Heat's 65th game, and D-Wade has had over 30 points 32 times. As Wayne Wade, he's been Miami's top scorer in 57 games already. How about he's been the, the leader in assists 50 times? Three-point Utah lead, 544 left. Here's Kirilenko turning on Moon. Blocked by O'Neal. That's big time. Wade could not catch up to a very hard-to-catch bounce pass from Mario Chalmers. Bad time to commit a turnover, especially when you have only eight all day. And that's the team total for Miami. Eight turnovers. They've scored 20 points off 12 Utah turnovers. Jazz have a seven-rebound advantage. And Utah, their biggest edge, 55% shooting. And it comes more from great execution than great perimeter shooting. But Kyle Korver gives them both. Korver, is that a three? Yes. So Kyle Korver now has 20 points for the third time this year. Korver, been a killer. Eight for 10 shooting. And coach, hard to beat Utah when you let the Jazz shoot 56%. Remember, this year, Utah is 21 and four when they're over 50%. And how about Korver, 41% three-point shooter, really stretches the defense. Buries the three, puts Utah up six. Heat timeout, heat ball when we come back. Three coming into the quarter. Why is Utah up six? Well, you talk about the Heat defense, the lack of. Utah's eight for 10 from the floor in this quarter. The Heat's four for 11. Wade missing a three. The Jazz on a 14 to four run. Moon got it back. With just under five minutes left, this is a critical possession for Miami. Yeah, give give uh, Udonis Haslam a lot of credit for knocking that ball loose so Moon could steal it. That diagonal pass is always a tough one to make to get it to a teammate because it's usually stolen. There'll be hustle for Chalmers, but the Heat will remain on the defensive end. Utah shooting 56%. 20 points each for Darren Williams and Kyle Corbin. Look at his hustle by Chalmers. He tries to get after it. The ball's a little too quick getting out of bounds. And now Coach Sloan in Utah has got you right where they want you. They got that great execution in the half court with a six-point lead. Moon on Kirilenko. This is Okor. He was fouled by Haslam with only seven seconds left on the shot clock. Second foul on Udonis. And for Miami, that is the fourth team foul. Yeah, UD kind of bailed him out with the shot clock running down, although Okor did make a shot like that earlier off the board, the runner. Okor averaging 18 points a game with you know, 50 percent shooting. A one-time All-Star back in 2007. Okor, remember, was the 38th pick in the 2001 draft. But this game's getting away from the heat a little bit here. Wade missed it, got it back, and then lost it. And the Jazz have it. They are on a 16-4. to 
And they've scored seven unanswered. Yeah, the Heat are down eight. Now a little over four minutes left. They've got to get some stops, obviously. It looks like Utah's uh, pretty much getting a good shot every time down the floor. That's what they do. Four on the shot clock for the Jazz. The cut by Corbin. And the block. Loose ball rebound. Knocked out of bounds by Miami. Eric Millsap is tough in there. He's the third best offensive rebounder in the NBA at three and a half a game. Watch a block by Wade. Oh, man. One second on a shot clock. Corbin threw it up, and Millsap fourth for the rebound, and the Heat knocked it out of bounds. Yeah, well, Dwayne Wade blocked that shot by Corver before it ever left Corver's hands. Eight-point Utah lead, 340 left in the game. The bounce pass deflected by Chalmers, stolen by Wade. Here's Rio on the run. Hammered it down. Oh, he had to do that. Karolenko might have blocked it. Williams tried to foul Wade when he got the ball, but he was too late getting there, and Chalmers finishes the play. 15 points for Mario Chalmers. The Heat better dig in on this end. Wade got his sixth assist. And another Heat foul on the Darren Williams point-blank field goal attempt. Udonis picking up his third. The Heat now over the limit. Darren Williams shooting 82% this year from the foul line. Uh, you wonder how the Heat won in Utah. Boozer and Kirilenko both missed the game, and this guy didn't have a very good game. 13 points with six turnovers. He's been much, much better today. Yeah, that was the end of the road trip. Wasn't well, it for the Heat when they won that, that last game? Wound up 3-2 and two on that road trip. Darren Williams, quite a player. The third pick out of Illinois in the 2005 draft. Averaging right around what he was last year, just under 19 points per game. Today, he's got 22, along with 11 assists. It's always an interesting, but a great big man. Both. Then you win a championship. That's right. Dwayne Wade knocks it home. Wade with 33. Miami down six. They yeah, always have a chance with ball, but obviously they've got to get some stops to heat, does. Williams setting up Millsap for another score. Darren Williams does it all for his team. 12 assists. And Millsap, coach, has nine points, seven of them here in the fourth quarter. A yeah, very underrated player in the NBA. Wade guarded by Karolenko, leans in, doesn't get the foul, but he gets the three. Oh, wow. His third triple today. Wade has 36. There's still hope. The Heat are within five. But the Heat needs stops as badly as they need scores. And right now, Miami in a stretch of committing fouls. They hear the complaining that Mills, I mean, uh, let's see this three first by Wade. He thought he was gonna get the foul, and he didn't get it. But the Heat, are, the, the Heat players thought Kirilenko set an illegal screen right there, but the Heat got the foul. You know, keep in mind, Mario Chalmers picking up that foul. Tony Dwayne Wade had 85 triples through his first five seasons. He is 69 this year. The, the uh, trainer for the U Utah Jazz is tending to uh, some blood on Millsap's face. Oh, Dwayne Wade's got a band-aid that would fit perfectly in that <laughs> spot. He's not giving it up. Get a little uh, impromptu timeout here due to that. Cleaning up the, the blood. Well, recently, the untimely passing of longtime Utah Jazz owner Larry Miller. This was a great man for Salt Lake. He began his fortune with a series of car dealerships. That's where he gained his fortune, but his passion was right there, watching his Utah Jazz play night after night. Our condolences to the Miller family. Yeah, terrific, passionate owner. And those patches they're wearing with his initials on it, that logo goes all the way back to the Jazz origination when they were the New Orleans Jazz, a moniker that made a lot more sense when they played in New Orleans. <laughs> it does, doesn't it? Utah Jazz. Yeah, Darren, uh, Darren Williams getting the first of two. By the way, Dwayne Wade today extended his NBA streak 20-plus games with actually 21 games in a row with 
20 points or better. It's the longest current streak in the NBA and the longest since LeBron James went 49 straight games from December 07 to March of 08. And D. Wade picked up his 80th straight game of double figures. That's his record and the franchise record. 24 points for Darren Williams. It's a 107-100 lead for Utah. Dwayne Wade just took a knee to the thigh. He's hurting a little bit. Yeah, he's got a little, his left ankle's a little sore. He's got a, a sore hip. This time of the year, guys are banged up, you know, when you're into the 60s of games played. And Dwayne Wade has played in every game for Miami, all 65. So has Mario Chalmers. They've started every game in the backcourt together. I mean, he's a score. Then they need a series of stops. You see the double team of Wade. Utah's going to get it out of his hands. That's going to be short. Wade with the rebound, obviously. Kirilenko saves it in to Okur. And here comes Utah. Two on two break. And oh, Darren Williams slows it down. Now the clock becomes your adversary as well. Under two minutes left. You're down by seven. Now it becomes paramount that you get stops. Aaron Williams on the spin with four to shoot. Now three. Okor just flings it up there. And an offensive foul on Mehmet Okor. Yeah, loose ball foul on Okor going for the rebound, but they're not over the limit, Utah. That puts them right at the limit now. Both teams now are in the penalty. You know, the Jazz this year, when they score over 100 points, are 31 and 7. The Heat reaching 100 points today. Miami scored 100 or better in eight of the last 10 games. Jamario Moon comes out for Miami. James Jones comes in, and there he is, shooting a three. That's a long two, and it misses. And Millsap hugging his seventh rebound. Yes, yeah, Spolster goes right to running a play for James Jones. Now, the Heat had a 26-5 and record when they carried a lead into the fourth quarter. Yeah, 17-2 at home. They've been outscored in the fourth quarter today by 10. And the rebound of Jones with a minute two left. Times a wasting with a heat down seven. Dwayne Wade has 36. The Heat need more, and Chalmers was fouled. Bad foul by Kirilenko. He's reaching in there with the ball, you know, 30 feet, 26 feet from the basket. Stops the clock, puts a good foul shooter on the line. That's exactly what the Heat wanted there. Mario Chalmers, who's had two good games this year against the number one pick in the NBA, Derrick Rose of the Bulls. Chalmers scoring 16 and 17 points against Rose this year. Chalmers today has 16 points. He's been in double figures in six of his last seven. He's now averaging over 10 points a game for Miami as Jermaine O'Neal steps off. Yeah, the Heat goes smaller now with their defense, four perimeter guys, and Udonis in the middle. Jermaine O'Neal today, a heat high for him. He's got 20 points. Kirilenko finds Corver. Oh. An offensive foul. Wow. Kirilenko making back-to-back -back mistakes, a bad foul, and then a bad offensive foul as Moon took the hit. Uh, he give it and take it away. He was, he was paramount to giving this team a lead earlier in the quarter. And watch as he take the foul. Jerma Jermaine, uh, uh, Jamario Moon taking it. And now you've got the, the Heat are going to get Jermaine O'Neal back in the game. They're going to run offense, defense here if they can, if there's dead ball situations. So Jermaine comes in, Jamario goes out. The two players that came from Toronto in a deal that's in. Sean Marion and Marcus Banks to the Raptors. How about that move by the Heat coaching staff? They get Moon in the game for defense and he draws a charge. 45 seconds left. The Heat are down five. They got to get a score here. Wade wanted three. Guarded by the taller Kirilenko. He blows by him. Hands it off. Haslam dunks it home. Uh, D. Wade with his seventh assist. The Heat's down three now. They don't need the foul. Plenty of time on the clock. 33 seconds left in a thriller. Kirilenko from Millsap. Blocked by Jermaine O'Neal. Oh, wow. He blocked the dunk. 25 seconds left. Miami down three. Here comes Wade. Out to Chalmers for three. In and out. James Jones got the rebound. He also got fouled with 16 seconds left. The Heat will have possession, trailing by three. Yeah, the Heat's going to go to the foul line. James Jones will go. What a great play by Jermaine O'Neal. Millsap goes to the basket. Watch O'Neal. 
We talked about to how terrific he is blocking the shot with the left hand. That's how you, that's textbook technique on how to block a shot of the guy driving to the basket with the right hand. Jermaine O'Neal, he knows how to do that. 30th all time in block shots in the NBA. He's got three blocks today over 1,500 in his NBA career, which has spanned 13 seasons. Not bad for a young man that came out of high school in Columbia, South Carolina to the NBA some 13 years ago. Eric, Utah's got 120 and one full timeout left. Oh, it went off white. Miami ball. Miami's got two 20s and a full left. Coach Spolster will use one of his timeouts, get them in a huddle. And see if they can run a, a good play here to get two points or three. Either tie it or take the lead. What a fortunate play for Miami after James Jones misses his second free throw. Millsap has it go off his foot out of bounds. So now it's a three to win and a two to tie. Oh, you got to love it. Donis Haslam does this to everybody. They try to keep him off the defensive, uh, his offensive boards, and they wind up hitting the ball out of bounds. That's a team rebound for the Miami Heat. Full timeout for Coach Spolster. Let's see the play that they come out of the timeout with. See if he can get a good shot. Tie or go ahead in this game. Yeah, what a pivotal play with 15 seconds left. Miami scored the last five points in a 39-second span just when it looked like it was lost. At 107-100, back they come. Well, this has been a rivalry between Miami and Utah that is close, and we've had some thrillers. Check this out. Wade has the ball, and the game is in his hands. He puts it up. It is good! He did it! Dwayne Wade has won the game! 39 points! A new career high! Five seconds to go. Here comes Wade. Pump fakes, goes up, and wins the game! He wins the game at the buzzer! It bounced once, it went home! Dwayne Wade wins it for Miami! Now how about a trifecta for Wade against Utah? <laughs> what do you think he's getting the ball in the tie-up at a timeout here? You know, obviously Utah's gonna try to deny Dwayne Wade. And one of the things they go over in the huddle, I'm sure, is spreading out to get good balance on the floor because if the Wade can't get the ball, somebody else is going to have to take the shot. But with 15 seconds left, you expect the ball in Wade's hand. And you know, Eric, you don't wait right here to take a shot. When you're down to, you want to be able to get the get shot up as soon as possible so it gives you more than one opportunity. You know, maybe you can get the offensive rebound if you miss the shot. Here comes Wade with eight. Wade down the lane for the tie. Rebound, Jones, down he goes. And we get a foul with 3.9 seconds left. James Jones can tie it from the free throw line. How about when they inserted James Jones late in this game and put him in to stretch the defense, maybe get a three. He's really coming through on the interior of the heat in the basket. As you can see, Wade missed it. Jones gets the rebound, gets knocked down. Looked like maybe Kirilenko. This is, a, this is a shot that Wade usually makes. He'll get the rebound, then he gets pushed by Korver, Kirilenko, take your pick. Well, the push was from Korver, but the foul was assessed to Kirilenko, and he's done. Andre Kirilenko fouls out of the game. It's the first foul out this year for a young man out of Moscow. Well, James Jones, Tony, he's going to the line with the game on the line. Jones this year, here a 77% free throw shooter. He's 10 for 13 for the season, and he needs both to pull Miami even with just under four seconds left. Utah's got uh, 120 and one full left. The Heat's got two 20s. He did it! We're tied at 107 with 3.9 seconds left. James Jones, a hometown hero from American High School in Miami and the University of Miami. He has made some huge plays for the Heat today. How about the Heat down 107-100? Come back with seven straight points, tie the game. A little under four seconds left. 
They're going over in the huddle now what they think Utah's going to do to try to, you know, get the game winner. Well, Dwayne Wade's House of Thrills doing it again. Seven points for Miami in the last 51 seconds. Yeah, usually he makes that shot. He's upset with himself, but James Jones comes through big time. How about Udonis Haslam keeping that ball alive like he usually does? Now, with the Heat down one after that first made free throw, James Jones makes the second. Utah calls timeout. Eric, we've got to say it again. In situations twice this year with Chicago, we had another situation on the road in Los Angeles when they took it away from D-Wade. D-Wade usually comes up with a steal or a block shot or some kind of good big defensive play in a situation like that. Let's see if he can do it again. Coach, I really enjoyed James Jones' approach at the free throw line. He was confident, and he was quick with it. He didn't hesitate. He took two very quick free throws knocked them both in now it's 107 yeah you know, jerry sloan he's plotting his offensive strategy let's talk about this first what, what do you think he's looking for he's going to try to get the ball in darren williams hands so, you know four seconds 3.9 seconds plenty of time you can do a lot of things with it look for darren williams to get the ball maybe penetrate try to dish off to someone maybe come off a screen and then if, if no one plays him they'll take the shot or hit an open man okay the heat defense what's your expulsion stressing here they're going to maybe bring a guy off the ball but you got to be conscious of getting it back to him you know when they throw it in maybe double team Darren Williams so he doesn't get the ball now yep. Jermaine O'Neal's going back as a good shot blocker O'Neal Moon Wade Haslam and Chalmers for the Jazz it's Corver Okor CJ Miles Carlos Boozer yeah, it's a good matchup. And Darren Williams. Yeah, it's a good matchup for the Heat with Okor and Boozer in the game. You got uh, Udonis guarding Okor and O'Neal guarding Boozer. Here we go with the game tied at 107 and just under four seconds left. In the Williams against Wade for the win. Overtime. Overtime. Well, for the second time in three games, and for the fifth time this year, Miami headed to an extra five minutes. Five seconds to force overtime. Eric, the Heat a 4-0 in overtime, and the Utah Jazz a 1-1. One one. Well, Dwayne Wade has 36 points. Jermaine O'Neal has 20. Mario Chalmers has 17. For Utah, Darren Williams, 24 points and 12 assists. Carlos Boozer has 16 points. Kyle Korver, 20 off the bench. Each team gets three timeouts in this overtime. Two fulls and a 20. Jazz shot 52% through four quarters. Miami, 45%. There's Okor getting a three. Oh, it's important to get that first possession in overtime. Now you got the opposing team playing from behind. Okor's second triple today. He's got 75 on the year on 45% from downtown. Nemeth with 11 points in this game. So the Jazz ahead by three. Jermaine O'Neal, he's got 20 points. Double team, six to shoot. It's Wade. This is Jones with two on the shot clock. Chalmers with an air ball. And the Heat with a 24-second violation. Good defense by Utah. They had everything covered that time. They double teamed Jermaine O'Neal, and that forced the Heat to swing the ball and get stuck with the 24-second clock. Well, the Utah Jazz, a team that's won 15 of their last 17 games. The Miami Heat have won five of their last seven, including three straight here at home. We're going to sweep the season series from the Jazz, and you see how well you have to play to beat Utah. And the Heat, are, as we mentioned many times, they're going on a four-game road trip. They like to get this home game before they go on that trip. Boozer has it rim in and out. Rebound batted around, finally claimed by Jermaine O'Neal. That's rebound number six for the Heat starting center. 3.43 left in overtime. Jazz ahead by three. Wait for the tie. Boozer with his 10th rebound. So Carlos Boozer has his ninth double-double. Nice pass. This is Corver for three. That's oh trouble. Yeah. That had trouble written all over. Yes, yeah, the Heat are going to call timeout right here. They thought that O'Neal got pushed by Boozer at the other end, but no call. Kyle Corver has tripled four times in six attempts. He has a season-high 23 points. The former Creighton Blue Jay coming up in a big way today for Utah. Uh, the guy that shoots 41% from the three-point line for his career. They find him open. He gives them the, the Jazz a six-point lead. There with the Heat down six, Coach Spolster was talking to the officials. He thought that Jermaine O'Neal got pushed on that rebound by Carlos Boozer. Let's see this again. Let's see if we can see it. Shot goes up. 
Bruiser's hand is right in the, his, his elbow, his forearm's right in the back of Jermaine O'Neal. Looked like he did give him a nudge. And usually there is an over the back, you know, over the top on that call, but the Heat did not get it. Well, Miami came from seven down on the game's final minute to send it in overtime. Alley has 319 left in OT to overcome a six point deficit. Dwayne Wade with 36 points through four quarters, looking for his first score here in the overtime. Yeah, the Heat don't need a three here. Just take what they give you. Got right to the rim and then got caught underneath the rim. And the Heat have missed all three of their shots here in the overtime. Now they're in a position they were in in their fourth quarter. They need some stops. Darren Williams under composure always. O'Cour underneath. This is Corver. Open look. Yeah. Kyle Corver has absolutely killed the Heat today. Corver with a season high 25 points. The Jazz have scored eight straight here in overtime. You see how meticulous they are when they have the lead. They, they make the shot clock go down and they get a good shot. Jermaine O'Neal in the low box. Comes in for the hook. Miami 0 for 4 in the overtime. And the Jazz have scored all eight points in this extra session. They're up 115 to 107. I wonder what the uh, statistics are in the overtime about the first, uh, who wins the game with the first team scoring in overtime. I bet you it's pretty high for the team that scores first. James Jones picking up the heat foul, his second. Kyle Corbin hurting the heat all night. He's one of those rhythm shooters. He gets in a, in a groove. He's very difficult to stop. A good the baseline out of bounds play going to the basket. And that one put him up six in overtime. Just burying shots from all over the place. He's very difficult to guard because he's coming off those screens. He just spots up when you're trying to play guys penetrating to the rim, especially Williams. You can't stop Williams one-on-one. -on -one. And when you double-team him and you help in the lane, he finds the open man. Uh, Coach, what's hurt Miami even more, two of the three field goals Utah's made in the overtime have been triples. The first score by Okur, and Cal Corver a moment ago also with a three. Now about Williams, 24 points, 13 assists, five rebounds. Kyle Korver, who's in his second year as a member of the Utah Jazz. He only had seven points when these clubs met in December in Utah. Boozer underneath had it blocked by Jermaine O'Neal. And that is the fourth block shot today for Jermaine. But Miami still has not scored here in overtime. Small margin of error now when you're down eight under two minutes. You've got to execute at both ends. Wade against Ronnie Brewer. Turns the corner. Still going. Finds O'Neal for the easy score. 22 for Jermaine. Eighth assist for Dwayne. Dwayne Wade has averaged 10 and a half assists since the All-Star game, those 12 games previous to this game. That's incredible. What he has now is what he's averaging over the last 12 games. 36 points and uh, 10 assists. He's a little under that in the assist department. Oh, cool. It rolls off. Wade with a rebound. The heater down six. Minute 24 left in the overtime. When you got this guy, you always have a chance. Dwayne Wade, 38. It's a four-point game. Good use of a screen there. Now that he needs to, obviously he needs to get a couple of more stops. Four straight points for Miami now. The defense always, usually this team, this team, team the defense fuels their offense. And an offensive foul by Corver trying to get open on James Jones. He used his arm right in front of the official. Good play by James Jones denying Corver. James Jones has had a significant role in this game. Watch right here. You'll see it. Good camera work, guys. Easy call for the official. Not a good play by Corver. Here's Wade from 20. Jermaine O'Neal underneath. Grabs it. Gets it out to Chalmers with a fresh shot clock. Under a minute left here in overtime. Miami down four. Wade against Brewer. The crossover. And the score. Oh, there's 40. 11 times this year, D. Wade has scored 40 or more points. Wow. Miami has scored the last six. And at that time, Udonis slipped to the basket, taking the defender with him, which allowed Wade to go one-on-one. -on -one. Some of those little subtle things are what help you in the game. Darren Williams with seven on the shot clock. Chalmers picks his pocket, comes up with a steal, hits a head for Wade. Here he comes with Udonis. Haslam missed the dunk, but was fouled by O'Cour and will have a chance to tie the game with 22 seconds left in overtime. How about Chalmers coming up big with a steal. Watch this again. He, he pokes it away and then may, has the frame of mind to get it to Wade. 
One two on one with Okur, of course, not going to give Udonis a, a, a dunk. Yeah, I'm starting to have a Syracuse flashback. <laughs> what was it, six? Six, six overtimes overtime. two nights ago. An overtime win last night in the Big East Tournament, and overtime is catching on. But how about the Heat? They had to score the last seven points of regulation to force overtime. Then they fell behind in the overtime, 115 to 107. They've scored six straight. Haslam needs two to tie. He did it. There it is. Eight straight points for Miami to tie the game at 115. When you got Darren Williams on the floor, sometimes you don't need to call a timeout. Call out a play so the defense can't reset itself. Darren Williams against the Heat defense. This is Boozer with nine. The jumper, no good. Rebound away, timeout Miami. A chance play. to win the game in the final five and a half seconds. How about Jermaine O'Neal defensively doing a good job on Booz and not giving him a good look at the basket. 5.6 seconds, plenty of time left for he to get off a good play. It already feels like the NBA playoffs here in Miami. And can the Heat run off 10 straight points? Watch O'Neal's defense right here. Booz could not get that shot. Wade knows what to do with it when he gets it. Timeout. And you know what the Heat coaches are going to do right here. You're going to try to get the ball away, let him do his thing, and the Heat are going to have an opportunity to win this game, run off the last 10 points of the overtime, and go come away with a victory. Dwayne Wade has 40 points, 8 rebounds, 8 assists, and 3 steals. His 40 points today, the most ever scored by a Heat player against the Utah Jazz, surpassing his own 39-point game against the Jazz. But you know that he has set franchise records against eight different opponents this year alone. It's just amazing. 11 times over 40 this year. We told you earlier that it's the 32nd time he's had over 30. 50 times he's led this team in assists. He's going to do it again tonight. And he's led the Heat in scoring 57 times. Tonight will be 58. It's just an amazing, amazing run by one of the great players in the game today. Well, we started this game at 1 in the afternoon, an afternoon that is slowly turning into early evening. Miami will have possession with 5.6 seconds left here in the first overtime. The Heat will inbound from half court, needing just a point to win the game. We talked about how young this team is with two rookies and two second-year players, but they've shown resiliency all year long. They've shown it again today. They're coming back in the fourth quarter late to tie the game. And now they were just down eight. They got a chance, the opportunity to win the game. Utah scored the first eight in overtime. The Heat have the last eight. James Jones, Mario Chalmers, Udonis Haslam, Jermaine O'Neal, and Dwayne Wade are on the floor. Ronnie Brewer in that far right corner defending Dwayne Wade. Utah's in the penalty, so they can't give a foul here to try to make the Heat take it out again. They deny it to Wade, who finally gets it with five. Wade with three. Wade with two. Going up for the win. Double overtime. Oh, tell me you weren't expecting that ball to go in. <laughs> oh, I was waiting for a swish. He's done it so many times. Good play. Good defense by Utah. They had two guys on Wade. Really didn't get a good look at the basket. Welcome to Syracuse South. <laughs> Watch this again. Two defenders on him as he tries to go left. Good job by Brewer. He comes up short, but the Heat go into a second overtime. Along with eight rebounds, eight assists, three steals, and two blocks. Coach, this is only the second triple overtime game in the history of the Miami Heat. The first one was back on November 20th, 1992, when the Heat lost 129-128 at Philadelphia. The Heat and the Jazz once played, uh, the Heat and Jazz once played a double overtime game, and this is the second overtime. I, right. I mistakenly yeah. said yes. third. This yeah. is the second overtime here in Miami. And he just had one with uh, Chicago. Tied at 115. The Jazz scored the first eight in the, over, the first overtime. The Heat answered with the next eight. And now scored 10 unanswered points. Jermaine O'Neal with 24. Miami scores first in the second overtime. You imagine how they try to keep track of those overtimes in that Syracuse game. They probably thought it felt like 15 of them. Andre Kirilenko's already fouled out. 
Here's Darren Williams, the jumper. He knots the game. Darren Williams with 26 points today. He's also got 13 assists. Not even near a season high in either category. Chalmers got an opening. Oh, what a play I, by Mario. He crossed over, dribbled on Darren Williams as he tried, as Williams tried to overplay to the, to the uh, pick and roll. Good read by Chalmers and a great finish. 19 points for Chalmers. And for those of you unfamiliar, in each overtime, you play five additional minutes. And you get three timeouts. You get two balls and a 20 for each team. Williams finds Brewer, four on the shot clock. Here's Williams again. Haslam comes down with his 10th rebound. Udonis Haslam with his 97th career double-double, his 17th this year. Home crowd is into this all day long. Jermaine O'Neal. He has really given the Heat scoring from in the painted area today. He comes up short there, but he has 24 points in this game. His best scoring game in his 13 played with Miami. Good defense by Okor at that time. Three minutes left here in the second overtime. Williams, what a beautiful pass, but Boozer mishandled it. The O'Neal looked like he hit it off his leg. Wow, look at that. 17 turnovers by Utah. Good for 28 heat points. Dwayne Wade, ball's been in his hands most of the day. He has played 45 minutes in this game. So is Chalmers. Jones for three. That's too long. Jermaine O'Neal tried to swipe it out, but here comes Jaron Williams. Accelerating and finishing. What a play. End to end for Jaron Williams. The Jazz coaches in unison. Off the bench looking for the foul yeah, as well. They thought Udonis fouled Williams on that play. He's got 28 points, Darren Williams. Four here in the second overtime. We are even at 119. Man, how fast did Williams get that ball up the floor? Wade thought twice about it. And that one goes over the top out of bounds and back to the Jazz in a game that is still even. Brewer is doing a terrific job on D-Wade. making him work for the pass and then really playing good defense and uh, not allowing Wade to get a clean look at the rim. They're playing Wade, scoring 40 points or better for the fifth time in the last eight games for Miami. Nice. Now you see why it was so important for him to get so much rest that he got earlier, and that's a foul by Udonis. Now, even with all that rest, Wade has played 46 minutes. Wade and Chalmers with 46 minutes. Udonis Haslam with 47 minutes. UD just picked up his fourth foul. You know, For the Jazz, the leading minute man, Mehmet Okor with 47. And you know who wants this game to go five or six overtimes? Philadelphia. The, Heat, the team the Heat's playing tomorrow. The 76ers played last night. Actually won at the Spectrum in Philadelphia. Final NBA game that will ever be played at the Spectrum. They beat Chicago 104-101. Thaddeus Young scored 31 for the 76ers. Carlos Boozer, he's got 17 points and 13 rebounds today. So Boozer gets both the Jazz ahead by two with two minutes left here in double overtime. Now the Heat are playing in familiar territory, playing from behind. Wade drives to the paint, pulls up and hits. Dwayne Wade, his first points here in the second overtime. He's got 42 for the afternoon on 17 for 36 shooting. Boozer is passed down low, deflected, out of bounds. They say off Miami. I thought Corver oh, hit it last. Yeah, it looked like Corver. It looked like it went off Corver from here. Let's see this again. Can't tell. All that matters is what the ref called anyway. Darren Williams off the inbounds. Missed it. And Udonis Haslam with his 11th rebound of the day. We're tied at 121. Will this game ever end? Oh, boy. A minute 30 left in double overtime. D. Wade. Got it again! Oh, man. 44 points, 8 assists, 8 rebounds. Well, Dwayne Wade, that was his 37th shot, which is his a career high in field goal attempts. He's had 50 this year, 48 and 46. Now he's got a 44. Emmett Okur comes back with a huge score. 
It ties the game at 123. 108 left at double overtime. Okor now has 13 points. Wade against Brewer. Drives right into him. Blocking foul on Ronnie Brewer. Yeah, they reached first. Both Corver and Brewer reached before the uh, Brewer tried to draw that charge. Wade gets to the foul line. Now, Ronnie Brewer and Darren Williams uh, lodging their formal complaint to referee Tom Washington. Yeah, he was moving anyway to his right. See right there, he reached in with the right hand. That's a good call by the official. Brewer did not have position to draw that charge. Very, very close call at best. Tied at 123. A minute left in double overtime. These are spectacular <laughs> numbers for the world's best player. How about uh, against the Knicks that night? 46 points, 10 assists, 8 rebounds, 4 steals, and 3 block shots. It was the best statistical game in the 35 years the NBA's been keeping blocks and steals. And he's, he's close to it now. The Again. 44 points he has, the most points anybody's put on Utah this year. And he's got 45 and counting. By the way, playing 40 minutes, nothing new to Wade. He's done it 26 times this year, but he's played 47 minutes. He made them both. Miami's up two. He has 46. Under a minute left in double overtime. Can the Heat hold on? Wade has Miami's last six points. Forty-five seconds left in double overtime. Eight seconds on the shot clock. Okor for three. And Dwayne Wade down with his ninth rebound. The home crowd out of their seats. If the Heat score here, they'll be out of their minds. Oh, this would be a big-time score if the Heat can get a basket here. All the pressure's on Brewer now to stop Wade. Here's Wade against Brewer. Brewer reaching. Five on the shot clock. Brewer won that battle. He tied him up for a jump ball with just under 20 seconds left here in double overtime. Wade knew he was in trouble. He tried to get a timeout, but Brewer already tied him up. Watch this. Wade's going to look at the official, try to get a timeout. Brewer reaches in. See, Wade's trying to call a timeout there, but Brewer already has his hands on it. Now, Eric, there's five seconds on the shot clock. If D. Wade wins this uh, jump ball, he's not going to have five seconds to score. If Utah gets it, he, uh, Brewer's going to try to tap it there. Wade's going to try to tap it here. Boy, that was a great, great defensive play by Ronnie Brewer. It was. Big jump ball. Wade has it deflect out. Brewer has it. Shot clock is off. The Jazz, well, they can either tie it, win it, or lose it here. And they choose again. Jerry Sloan does not to take a timeout. Brewer on the drive. Williams puts it up for the tie. He did it. With 3.4 left in double overtime, we're tied at 125. A timeout for Miami. Coach Spolster. The endless adventure. Coach Spolster called timeout before the Heat inbounded the ball. Otherwise, the Heat wouldn't have been allowed to get it at half court. Watch this again. This is not a good play by the Heat players. You know you got to get a timeout here so you get it at half court. You're going to see Williams score. Now, Spolster at the other end is calling timeout with the official there. It's a good thing they put that rule in a few years ago that the coach is allowed to call timeout. Otherwise, he wouldn't be allowed to get it at half court. You can't advance the ball and then call timeout and get it at half court. Not in the last two minutes of overtime or in the fourth quarter. So, all said and done, he will have the ball on the side. 3.4 seconds left of the tie game in second overtime. What an incredible afternoon of basketball here in Miami. And this is the fourth game of a five-game road trip for Utah. They will finish up tomorrow afternoon in Orlando at 4 o'clock. The Heat play the next four and six of the next seven on the road beginning tomorrow in Philadelphia, 1 o'clock tip right here on Sun Sports. All right, Coach, seems obvious. We know the Heat are going to want to get it to Wade. But Utah knows that as well. That is Spolster County. Well, you know, you remember when Chicago tried to uh, double-team Wade off the, off the guy taking the ball out of bounds. Right now, look for the Heat. Uh, James Jones took it out last time. Let's see if the Heat have a play where if his man comes off him like he did last time, Wade can get it right back to Jones for a jumper. Dwayne Wade has 46 points in this game, along with nine rebounds, eight assists, three steals, and two blocks. If you're Jerry Sloan, obviously you want somebody else to try and beat you, not D. Wade. 
Well, right here for the Heat, it's win or go on to a third overtime. Let's see who takes it out for the Heat. Looks like Mario, it looks like, uh, yeah, Mario Chalmers is going to take it out. He's got Jermaine O'Neal, James Jones, Udonis Haslam, Dwayne Wade to choose from. 3.4 seconds left here in double overtime. They may go right inside to Jermaine O'Neal from out of bounds, but they're going to try to get it to Wade. Wade has it with two, with one, going up for the win. Oh, that time he got a great look at the basket, better than he did after the first overtime. Man, he's upset with himself. That's the one he usually buries. The Heat got the shot they wanted with the guy they wanted taking it, but we're going into a third overtime, and Tony DeLeo, the coach of Philadelphia, is smiling right now. Wait by Brewers playing excellent defense. Here's Jermaine O'Neal. What a score for oh, Jermaine. Man. What a play. That's a move we haven't seen. Drop steps the basket with about three seconds on the shot clock. 28 points for O'Neal. He's played 46 minutes. Twice in this third overtime, he's put the heat ahead. And there he blocks his fifth shot today. Chalmers on the catch. Good job by Chalmers not to force that play. You see some of the maturity of Chalmers. Maybe earlier in the year he might have tried it. But now, he's, as, as Coach says, he's no longer a rookie. Here he goes. Oh, it bounces man. off to Corver, and the Heat lead stays at 2. 2.25 left here in triple overtime. Chalmers from behind, knocked it away from Williams. Right to D. Wade, and here comes Miami. Wade on the move, all the way. You see the way he picked his way through there. He looked to his right. He made the defender think he was going to pass it. And then he had the burst of speed to the rim. That's D. Wade at his best. And my man's got 48 points. On uh, 19 for 39, the most field goal attempts in Heat history. Yeah, he usually doesn't have, he's not usually a volume shooter. You know, he shoots 50% for the season. Chalmers, there's Chalmers again, baby. Here he comes. Oh, my. Wow. Talk about picking pockets. The fourth best player, the fourth best in the NBA in steals. Does it again at a crucial moment, giving the Heat a six-point lead. Wow. Well, Heat fans exhale, but don't celebrate. Still 149 left here in the third overtime. Let's watch this again. Here's the first steal by the second one by Chalmers. Good job. He had one just previous to that. Puts the Heat up six. He's got five steals for the game. This is the other one. Watch as he knocks it away. He gets credit for the for the steal on that. He should. And then you know what D-Wade likes to do with it. Just get through there, baby. Just, just get to the rim like you always do. The guards getting it done here in triple overtime for the Heat. Five steals for Chalmers. Dwayne Wade. Now he's done everything, including taking the most shots in an NBA game this year. He's got 39 attempts. Kobe Bryant took 38 shots in the Lakers game at Phoenix back on March 1st. Well, it feels good, it looks good, but we know well enough. A six-point lead is nothing to celebrate with 149 left in a third overtime. With Darren Williams on the floor for Utah, you don't, you, no lead is ever safe, because that man can play. We know that, one of the best point guards in the NBA. He can score when he has to. He's got the assist to show it. So this game is far from over. He's got 30 points and 13 assists. Kyle Korver with 25 points. Carlos Boozer has 20. Oh, what a day it has been. Don't forget to join us tomorrow, Sunday afternoon, 1 p.m. tip. If we're done with this game by then, we'll be playing Philadelphia at the Wachovia Center. Hope we see you right here tomorrow afternoon. We thought we were going to get into Philadelphia early, Eric, with the rate we're going. Well, tomorrow, same time, different place. Yeah, 1 o'clock on Sun Sports. You do it all over again tomorrow. And that's, a, that's an important game as well. How come you haven't renewed yet? These games are great. 144 left in triple overtime. Corver, he's got the hot hand. That one's in and out. Okor had it swept away by Dwayne Wade. But it'll stay with Utah with 137 left here in the third overtime. And coach, you said it earlier, and you were right. Not a single fan has left the Heat's house today. And when you get here, you're not leaving till this one is done. And we hope they leave happy and exhausted. Darren Williams turns the corner, drives in on Shaman. Boozer, inside. 
and a foul on Dwayne Wade, who is looking for the block shot against Ronnie Brewer. What a what a great pass by Boozer. He looked to his left and then found his teammate inside Brewer wide open. Wade tried to close the gap, but he got there a little late. Watch his pass by Boozer. Terrific. And you can see, yeah, Wade tried to uh, get in there. Who's the foul on? Chalmers. It was on Chalmers. Third okay. foul on Mario Chalmers. Peter up six. Brewer makes it five. And he's got an unusual rotation on his ball. Doesn't look like he's a good foul shooter, but he's making him. 73%. He scored 18 points in the first game between these two clubs. He's got 13 today. Five of seven from the line. And he flicks them both home. So 14 points for Brewer. Miami ahead by four. A minute 20 left in the third overtime. D. Wade, 48 points. He and Mario Chalmers have both played 52 minutes. Career high for both. Here's Jones for three. Yes! 136 to 129. And D. Wade is one assist away from a triple-double. A minute left in triple overtime. And the Heat are ahead by seven, which matches their largest lead of the day. Wade with a steal. He'd have the ball. Chalmers against Williams. And the Heat wisely letting some time draw, drain off that clock. Boozer commits the foul. Yeah, well, the Heat, they're down seven, uh, Utah is, so they've got a foul. There's only two possessions left in this game with 45.5 seconds on the clock, but the Heat's going to get the ball on the side. Utah's not in the uh, penalty. They are now. Watch this hustle by the Heat. Wade gets after it, dives after the loose ball, gets it to Udonis. So Dwayne Wade with four steals in this game. He and Chalmers have combined for nine steals today. And Wade's going to the foul line to try to tie his career best of 50 that he made about three weeks ago. Well, three different Heat players setting career high in minutes. Dwayne Wade with 48 points, 10 boards, nine assists. With a Heat up by seven, he'll shoot two, and we'll let you hear the chorus. You think D. Wade knows that uh, LeBron had 51 last night with a triple-double? <laughs> on a day where Dwayne Wade moved past Alonzo Mourning into the number one spot on the Heat's all-time scoring list. Now he's concentrating on winning the game. Looking at a stat sheet over there with uh, 50 points for Dwayne Wade. For the second time this year, he drops 50 on an opponent. Jermaine O'Neal, that's his fifth block shot today. Miami's going to win the game. They're in the driver's seat. They make the free throws. They win the game. Wow, nine-point lead, and it's really been the backcourt of the Heat along with Jermaine O'Neal coming up big. Udonis a big game. How about James Jones coming up big late in this game? Isn't there's, there's the block by Jermaine O'Neal that really put Utah in the pickle here. This is already the second highest scoring game in the history of the Heat. Only 141 the catch. The Heat's franchise high, 141 against Denver in February of 91. I'd like to see D. Wade pick up one more assist, get that triple-double. He always knocks on the door, but doesn't quite get there. The most important thing is being accomplished, and that is a victory. D. Wade has three career triple-doubles. None this year yet. Well, the Heat have finally broken this thing open. 11-point lead here in the third overtime. Well, 26 seconds left here in triple overtime. The clock is running out on Utah. The Heat have outscored the Jazz here in the third overtime. 15 to 4. An emotional win. Wow. An exhausting win and, and a meaningful victory for Miami with D. Wade getting 50. Yeah, he was trying to get that lob to O'Neal. That would have been the triple double there. But he'll take the game, the stats, whatever it is, he'll take the win, man. That's all he's about. Well, the Heat have done it. The wow. Heat have done it. They've won 10 of their last 11 against Utah. They sweep the series for the fourth time in the last five years. 140 to 129. The second highest scoring game in Heat history. And Dwayne Wade, on a day where he became the Heat's all-time scoring leader, tied his own career high with 50 points for the second time this month. Another exceptional performance by Wade and his Miami Heat. It took three overtimes, but the Heat win it.
Miami's now won three in a row, five of six, and six of their last eight games. And uh, it took a long time, but now the Heat's 18 and two when they have a lead at home going into the fourth quarter. Well, after winning 12 straight, the Jazz have draw, dropped back-to-back -back games. And we'll visit with the block party that is Jermaine O'Neal. All coming up. Stay right there. This is Miami Heat basketball on Sun Sports.